Hey there, guys, and welcome back to the Travis and Damien Podcast, episode 39. We are available on anchor.fm slash Travis Damien Podcast, along with Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and many more. Today, we'll be talking about Midman and Smash, Crash 4, and Mixer Shutdown. Then, we'll go into our recent activities, concluding with my thoughts on 13 Reasons Why Season 4. Closing the show out, we'll be talking about the PS5 event and The Last of Us Part 2 spoilers. So, the first piece of news is that there's a new Alex Kidd game. In the Miracle World DX, it is a remake of the first game from 1986. Um, and the last game that was released was in 1990, Shinobi World. It's like 30 years later. So when I saw this on my Twitter feed, and I was just like, wow, a new Alex Kidd game. And like the game actually looks like pretty cool. Yeah, it looks like a good remake. Um, it kind of reminds me of the, the Wonder Boy games when they remade that. Like, you know, well, it's not like that same style, but... Yeah, it's cool to see like these like Genesis things get like a second life and like a nice new graphics and stuff. And I think you could like switch the graphics on the fly too, mm-hmm. right? Like you could do like the retro. Yeah, I, I like it when those games do that because it really shows like the um, the improvements and stuff. And you know, also show that Sega is like, wow, like you're not only doing Sonic and stuff. That's cool. Like it's cool that they bring back these like you know older like Genesis franchises that didn't really have any love in the past few gen. Like I don't think Alex could ever even got like a like a 3D game or anything like that. So it's cool to see him like you know have relevance again mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah know? it's definitely kind of interesting just because like i said the last game was 1990 so yeah for sure like alex kid like after that you're on they kind of just died off as like a franchise slash series uh obviously he's made like a- appearances in like other like sega properties like sonic and sega all-stars racing and things like that but a brand new game and it looks like pretty good terms of like visually and things like that i think that this can do well depending on how well they like advertise it and like i believe they handed this off to like a uh a sort of like indie studio or something like that that makes sense it seems like sega has been doing that a lot like with, um sonic mania and on this game like I, I mean i like that they seem to pick like some pretty good people so i think and plus it's also like you know it's still just a remake of like a game mm-hmm so it's not like they're making new levels and that even mania had like a lot yeah they have, there was a lot of new like level like gimmicks and stuff but it was still like that some old assets from other games and stuff like that so hopefully they let them do like a full thing at some point it'll be cool to get like a new alex kid game just so like it's like a thing mm-hmm. again but uh this is a good step hopefully it's not like too too expensive because i know like the um the wonder boy remake was like 30 bucks for like a genesis <laughs> thing which was like it's, it's a bit much I and mean, i'm not saying it's like you know it's probably worth it because of the art and you know it's a lot of work put into it but still I think like maybe twenty dollars would be good. I, I don't know really if this even has a price yet, but again, it's cool that Sega is like really like doing this stuff. So yeah, yeah uh, the game's being made by Merge, and uh, according to their website, they uh, helped make Streets of Rage Four, the new one, and oh, Dead Cells. Okay. So. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. You know they like little <laughs> thing. Welcome to Merge, and then it's like a, a slideshow of like all the things, and Dead Cells is on here, and I was like, oh, interesting. So. Oh. And, and they also made brawl out or they helped make it oh wow like that so okay so they they worked on some pretty notable stuff so okay that, that brings more you know more assurance that this game is probably gonna be good again it's a remake mm-hmm. but you know it's always that's usually how they do things right like they do the remake or remaster and then they usually make a new game in that like franchise anyway just to gauge interest yeah. so yeah hopefully we can get a new alex good game after that mm-hmm. so super interested in this one all right, so now we got like so sort of like not E three E three stuff. <laughs> so first, well, this wasn't first, but we got the EA uh, play uh, event, and it wasn't like I didn't personally watch the whole thing live because I kind of forgot it was happening. Mm-hmm. But there were some notable things. Uh, Skate four, yeah, the finally the meme, you know, the meme is alive. <laughs> Skate four is actually happening. Uh, Apex Legends is coming to Steam, and this is actually pretty notable that a lot of EA games are coming to Steam now, not just like Apex Legends. Like we got Titanfall. Uh, like the start new Star Wars game, not the not the new Star Wars game that just got announced, but uh, Fallen mm-hmm. Order, um, and a lot of the EA games, and it looks like they're abandoning Origin finally. Um, I I've always went on record saying I think Origin is my least favorite of the launchers because I feel like the security is like really bad. Like I I have two step and it always still gets like try to get hacked by like people and it's like really annoying. But um, you know. With them all moving their games to Steam, like I see no reason for Origin to exist anymore. So it probably wouldn't surprise me we see in the next year that Origin is shutting down. It's, it probably like just costs too much money to maintain. Like no one really uses mm-hmm. it. Uh, probably the only people who use it for like Apex and stuff. So yeah, just interesting to see that's coming to uh, Steam. Plus, it's coming to Switch also, by the way, Apex Legends, yep. and it's going to support crossplay, which is also really cool. Um, 
next we got the the new Star Wars game, Star Wars Squadrons, which is going to be focusing on like dog fights and things like that. I know people are really excited for like a Star Wars game like that because I don't think we had one like that for a really long time. Mm-hmm. And we're getting a new game by the uh, A Way Out guy. <laughs> you, you, we all know the <laughs> Way Out guy. It takes two, so yeah. Yeah. So yeah, some some good stuff in there, but I, I heard the presentation itself was kind of like, yeah, it's EA. You know how they yeah, are. Yeah, <laughs> normally when I uh, when I watch any kind of like VODs that I'm like forced to watch, whether it's for this podcast or like the uh, L- League podcast, like I always put it on like one and a half or like two times speed, just like, you know, fast forward it a little. And like this one, like mm-hmm. you can 100% put it on two times speed or like you don't even need to watch it. But yeah, uh, Skate 4, very interesting for them to bring it back. You know, it is a big meme. But I wonder if people are actually going to buy it because, you know, (laughs) (laughs) I think they will. Yeah, I definitely think that there is a audience for it because I know a lot of people really like the skate series and skate four is probably going to do decently well financially for EA Uh, Apex Legends. You know, those sort of like updates uh, and things like that, Steam and Switch and crossplay. I think that those are all very good. Um, And like you said, with the origin thing, I think that you could be correct with the whole thing that they might be ditching origin could be costing too much money or things like that. And. I think that EA trying to push like their own or like any, any sort of dev that's just trying to push like their own storefront without other games to, besides their own like the Epic Games f- storefront is like sort of getting there compared to Steam like Steam is like this gigantic like platform for PC gaming and Epic Game Store is sort of getting there with like their free games and like exclusivity deals with like certain devs and things like that uh, the Star Wars Squadron game I think that that game is very interesting just because a lot of people have wanted that game personally. It looks boring, but that's just <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not really into that, like, vehicular, like, combat sort of things. Like, when I used to play Star Wars Battlefront 2, like, the OG one on uh, PS2, mm-hmm. I never liked the dog fights or anything. Like that. It never really interests me that much. Um, but it, it's also worth noting that this game, I think, is going to be, like, 40 bucks or something. Like, it's going to be a lot cheaper than a regular AAA mm-hmm. game. And it's not going to have microtransactions. So, yeah, that that's pretty cool, I guess. Uh, you know, really unlike EA to do any of those things. But, yeah, that's something worth noting as well. Yeah, and the uh, it takes two, the person that made A Way Out. I'm very interested in that just because I really loved A Way Out. And I wonder how mm-hmm. he's going to make this game just because it's not, like, a realistic sort of, like, co-op game. And I wonder if this game's going to have, like, the same vein of, like, co- required co-op because that's still, like, a super niche thing in gaming these days. So... Just gonna have to wait and see more on that one. Yeah, and I, I hope they do the same business model where like you buy one and you get like one free. Mm-hmm. I think right. That's how, what they did last time. Yeah, that was cool. So hopefully they do that as well. Yeah. <laughs> Next thing we got here is uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate. They announced the Arms character finally, Min Min, uh, and the way she works is very interesting. That both of the A and B buttons perform like uh, the regular moves instead of like the special move for B. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, they also showed off me characters or me costumes, Ninjara, Heiachi, Selena Marie, and the Vault Boy, which was a pretty good surprise. And then yeah, usually they have like a big yeah, one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they announced the Joker and Hero Amiibo for Fall 2020. Um, yeah, first off, I just was that Joker Amiibo looks sick, and I'll probably yeah. get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I really like how it looks. Um, but secondly, um, yeah, Min Min, I'm very excited. I was Min Min. Um, I think a lot of people narrow it down to, like, Min Min or Twintel for, like, the ARMS representative. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, I know people want Twintel because, you know, reasons. But <laughs> I think Min Min, <laughs> I think Min Min fits more because he actually uses her, like, ARMS. Like, Twintel is cool, like, in ARMS because she doesn't use her ARMS. She uses, like, her hair to fight. Mm-hmm. But it kind of, like, defeats the point of ARMS, like, having the ARMS character to represent that franchise if they don't use the ARMS. So, uh, I think Min Min is a good fit. Uh, her kicks, since in ARMS, she also uses her kicks a lot. I think that makes it some good, you know, gameplay for Smash too. So you can have your arm attacks and faster like kick attacks just for like when people get up close. I think that was also a really cool decision they made. Plus, I, I like Min Min. I, I used her in arms and she was fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of her gameplay, it, again, looks very unique. Uh, she has the two arms, A and B are to uh, attack. She could smash and tilt while moving, I think, and she could smash attack while in the air too, which is crazy. Uh, so you could switch her arms on the fly if you like do her down B, which is also pretty neat. Um, but yeah, she just looks like a fun character. I'm I'm pretty excited for her. Um, I again like I I feel like Byleth was kind of a misstep in terms of you know I, I love Three Houses and Byleth is cool and stuff, but I feel like his kit really got messed up. <laughs> like I really felt like it should have been like three other characters, but he tried making it to one dude and it didn't work. 
Uh, Minmin looks a lot more focused. Like they know what she wants to be. You know, there's an arms character in Smash. And from what I'm seeing, she looks really fun. I don't know if she'll be good. I mean, I'm not the person to ask for that. <laughs> but uh, she definitely looks fun, and I'll probably play her when she comes out. Yeah, uh, definitely a pretty good representative for ARMS, I would say. Um, yeah. And, yeah, the uh, direction that they took with this character compared to Byleth was a lot more clear in terms of what they wanted to do. Uh, and mm-hmm. Sakurai, just during this presentation, you know, he's doing it from home because of the whole COVID thing. And uh, he seemed to be having fun with it, so I'm glad that he's still having fun making characters for Smash because I know that, you know, multiple times he said that this is the last game and then he gets pulled right back in, so I'm glad he's having fun with it, so. Yeah, me too. And, it, like, it's going to be hard to top this game in terms of just sheer number of characters. I honestly feel like the next Smash game is going to be, like, a reboot <laughs> to the series. I don't know how you go from here at this point. Yeah. So. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for it. All right, so now we got some more news. Uh, Crash 4, it's about time. So before they actually showed this trailer, this game got leaked like a few, like maybe two days before. Uh, it showed the box art and I think the release date, mm-hmm. I think, uh, before it even got released. And, you know, um, I've got, I, I forget who's making this. I think Toys for Bobs are, is making this game. Is the people who uh, they did, did a Reignited yeah, yeah, yeah. Trilogy. They right? did the uh, Reignited yeah. Trilogy. So uh, that's like my first main concern is the fact that it's not Vicarious Visions because they're working on the uh, Tony Hawk remake. So yeah, but Toys for Bob they were heavily involved with the uh, Skylander stuff and things like that. Uh, they also did the Insane Trilogy for the Switch, uh, but they did everything for the Reignited Trilogy um, with some help from like Sinjaro Games and things like that. But yeah, like Crash Four, it's about time. I think that that is a perfect name for it. Um, I'm mm-hmm. very excited for this game. The fact that it's coming out so soon, relatively, it's coming out later this year, October second, and it sucks that literally everything for for this game kind of got leaked, except for the trailer itself, like the box art, the uh, release date. Like those are like the two main things that leaked out, and people were like, "Oh shit, there's actually a new Crash game." So, yeah, but I am personally super excited for this game. It looks pretty good, just like visually, um, depending on how they. Uh, you know, use the sort of like Crash Bandicoot name and the gameplay and things like that. It looks like it. They're they're staying relatively faithful to the original Naughty Dog games and just like building upon that. Hopefully, it's not like a Wrath of Cortex situation. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. I, I also think it looks really good. Uh. You know, I like the new power ups Crash could use. Uh. You could play as Cortex and like do some weird stuff. So that also looks pretty neat. Um. I just hope the game is more focused on just like that platforming because um I, I really like crash one and two like obviously they're, they're really mm-hmm. good but i really wasn't that big of a fan of crash three honestly because you know the game throws so many different gimmicks at you like it just felt too much and i feel like a lot of platformers like their third game is always like that usually they have like a lot of weird gimmicks and things like that just to spice it mm-hmm. up but it kind of just annoys Agreed. me so i'm hoping yeah I'm, yeah i kind of hope crash four is more just like and like the power-ups are a cool idea just to keep like the spice going you know you can play as cortex and things but don't just make it like you know like a different thing every level like it kind of gets kind of tiring like um crash 3 mm-hmm. did but yeah um, but right now I, i'm really liking it the game looks really pretty uh I, I like crash's new model i know some people aren't that excited for his new model and stuff like that but i think it looks pretty good um so yeah i'm, I'm excited to see what to do with it hopefully we get like another um spyro game or like crash could just be a thing again so yeah i'm pretty hyped for this as well and it's coming really soon october 2nd mm-hmm. so i would not mind another trilogy of crash games as long as they're all relatively good <laughs> yeah yeah like you know make sure they're good at least you know take your time making them, you know just yeah all right next piece of news is that microsoft shut down's mixer transitioning over to facebook gaming uh and the other big news attached to this is that ninja shroud and other big mixer streamers are free to go as they please so uh yeah they pretty much secured the fucking biggest bag of 2020 <laughs> yeah. um i think shroud was on mixer for maybe eight months before this entire thing happened so leading up to this uh there was a thing on twitter i can't remember the exact article but someone at mixer called the employees or like the e- the uh, mixer streamers like slaves or some shit like something like really fucked up and i was like uh oh and then like a couple of days later oh we just gave it over to facebook i was like what the fuck 
<laughs> but yeah, like this is kind of crazy because I know a lot of people, especially these smaller uh, content creators on Mixer and things like that, are now forced to move over to Facebook or Twitch. I think most of them are, are moving over to Twitch, uh, which some of them might not want to do because of whatever Twitch has been doing for the past couple of years. But when there's like literally no competition between the uh, gaming sort of streaming space and like Twitch is obviously the most popular option, you kind of want to go there. Um, but I never really used Mixer. Maybe I used it once to like watch Shroud or like Ninja or whatever. But like those were like one off occasions. I never like fully went into the the Mixer thing. Uh, and Ninja and Shroud, they don't know where they're going right now. I know a lot of people are wanting them to come back to Twitch. Um, either way, they're going to make a lot of money, whichever platform they decide to go to. If they sign another deal with like another streaming platform, whether it be with uh, YouTube or some other streaming platform because i know that facebook did try to like get them to sign on again but they both said no according to the article or something i read on um but yeah this is definitely a very interesting move for the streaming video game space yeah um i again i never use mixer like at all i don't think i've ever went into mixer like (laughs) at all but it kind of surprises me microsoft gave up so quickly like i thought they were gonna maybe give Mixer one big push when the Xbox Series X will come out, right? Like, I think that would be like, oh, look at Mixer, watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's why this the closing of Mixer really surprised me, too. I guess they were looking at the losses. And, like, during the pandemic, I know the numbers for Twitch went way up, and a lot of numbers went way up. But Mixer only went up, like, 0.2% or something like that. <laughs> so I guess Microsoft is like, all right, if, if everyone is home and no one's still watching Mixer, I think it was time to pull the plug. Yeah. Um, which is sad. I, I think they probably should have, like toughed it out until the Series X came out just to see what would happen and then shut it down. Um, but I guess this is their call. Maybe it was the right call. But yeah, it sucks for like the smaller streamers that like, you know, they built up an audience in Mixer and now they have to like start over again on like Twitch or Facebook gaming or something, you know, because not everyone's going to want to move to Twitch and not everyone's going to move to Facebook gaming, especially, um, you know, Ninja and Shroud, they're fine. You know? they, have, <laughs> they made a bunch of money. Like I don't think they have to, they probably don't even have to stream ever again, honestly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, I feel mostly bad because I, I saw on live stream fails. Like you still see like everyone just crying and stuff. That like, mixer starting down when they got the news over their streams. And, like, it's just really sad. I'm like, oh man. So yeah, um, not not very pretty the way Microsoft did this. But I, I guess I understand from a business point of view. But it probably could give them a more of a heads up, I guess. But yeah, it, it was not it's not a good time for mixer streamers. Yeah, it really sucks how Microsoft handled it because they literally kind of just like tweeted it out with like a vlog like oh my god yeah i know you know like this sucks and like you know we were always up about community and things like that but like they literally let no one know about this shutdown and i think they literally probably had like a board meeting like that morning and they were like all right so we're shutting down mixer all right fuck it we'll do it today and i'm just like whoa 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 you're not gonna let anyone know like (laughs) like obviously if you're ninja or shroud and you collected like those millions you're like holy shit i'm free Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they they signed the contract, they got the money and they don't even have to do the full contract. So yeah, they they made out like bandits. Like they're they're they should be happy. Yeah. <laughs> they are probably ecstatic now. So I'm not sure if Ninja's gonna come back to Twitch. I would not be surprised if Shroud came back to Twitch. And, yeah. And like yeah. his numbers would like blow up and things like that. Because I know Ninja had some like, you know, problems with Twitch and things like that. So it'd definitely be interesting if he did come back to Twitch, but you know, Twitch does sign that bag. They are Amazon after all, so you never know. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't see Ninja coming to Twitch because I know he had, like, beef with Twitch. But Shroud, he, he'll probably come mm-hmm. back. He, he, he looks like the type of guy that doesn't really do <laughs> whatever. So, yeah. All right, so next big news. I guess I'll talk about both yeah. of these. We got two Pokemon Directs. Um, it was one last week and then one this week. Um, the first week, they showed Pokemon Snap. Well, first, all right, I guess I should... They showed two mobile games. They showed Pokemon Brush Your Teeth. <laughs> you know, that's cool. And some other, like, puzzle game. Which, I, that one I don't mind. Uh, you know, Pokemon always done, like, weird puzzle games. Like, you mind, like, Pokemon Trope Pass or whatever yeah. on, like, DS? Yeah, sort of like that. Uh, but really, the big announcement from that Direct was new Pokemon Snap. Um, you know, people have been asking for Pokemon Snap for so long. You know, people are like, where's Pokemon Snap 2? Where's Pokemon Snap 2? Yeah, especially during the Wii U era. Because mm-hmm. it just makes sense, right? Like, you use the gamepad as, a, like, a camera or whatever. Uh, well, it looks like they're finally doing a new Pokemon Snap, and again, I don't know if this, you know, if the graphics in this trailer were real or not, but it does look really good. Um, you know, the Pokemon models look super nice. The environments look really good. 
Um, you know, to show a lot of different, you know, things happening, just like in Pokemon Snap, where Pokemon are just doing their stuff, you know, like a Magikarp just gets eaten by, like, a Pidgeotto, so that's pretty <laughs> cool. Um, so, yeah, but I think it looks great. You know, I don't really have a lot of nostalgia for, uh, you know, Pokemon Snap, since, you know, that was before I, you know, played Pokemon. Mm-hmm. You know, I started in Gen 3, but, um, yeah, I, 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 I can understand why people would be really high. And it just seems like a no-brainer, like, yeah. like... Game Freak loves milking, like, old nostalgia for uh, Gen 1. So it's surprising to me they never did a Pokemon Snap 2 till right now. So, um, yeah, that, that's very exciting. We don't really know when it's coming out. It just says under construction. So it seems like for a while, maybe 2021 is probably going to probably gonna see some new stuff for that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, uh, overall, that, that was a pretty good presentation. But then afterward, they're like, hey, we got some more stuff. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Um, and before the direct came out next week uh people were speculating it was gonna be a let's go johto um because uh he had like a bunch of like johto plushies behind him he had like all the johto starters lugia um ho ho and like all the legendary dog pokemon so people said oh it's gonna be let's go johto um and i know a lot of people wanted the gen 4 remake even though i thought that was that wasn't gonna happen because pokemon they're already doing the next dlc which is probably gonna come out during november when you know the usual next pokemon game will come out Mm -hmm. so i'm like okay i I could see a let's go game happening but anything is really on the table for whatever the hell this um announcement is gonna be but they were really hyping it up because they're like hey we're gonna like announce this thing it's gonna have its own thing i'm like oh okay let's see what it is uh they showed it and it was pokemon unite (laughs) So, Pokemon Unite is a mobile slash Switch MOBA game, you know, like League, mm-hmm. and is being developed by Tencent. Uh, and I think that's the point where a lot of people get upset. Um, obviously, there's some people who are upset about that it's not a Gen 4 remake. Those people are kind of dumb. Like, I didn't really expect the Gen 4 remake to come out right now. It's going to happen because that's just how Pokemon works, mm-hmm. but probably not now. Um, I could understand people being upset that it's not Let's Go Johto because I also thought that's what it was going to be. Um, cause just cause it was like some hints, I guess that was going to happen. I, I probably just expected it to happen cause they're already doing a DLC for sword and shield. So I didn't really expect them to do a mainline Pokemon game right now. Uh, but no, it was this game. And the thing that just bothers me more about this is just the fact that, you know, Tencent doesn't really have a good reputation for being a great company as a lot of people know at this point, you know, due to like, you know, a riot and things like that, you know, them just being weird about the Hong Kong stuff and like a bunch of, they own like almost everything at this <laughs> point. So yeah, I, I can see why people won't like this for Tencent. Uh, you know, that's a, a factor why I don't really like this. The other factor is I just think it looks kind of cheap and not fun. Like, I don't know, like this looks like, I, I, like I've seen ads for this type of MOBA before, like these MOBA, mobile MOBAs where they just look like super cheap and like, like dumb and stuff. Like, I don't know. I'm not really into this. You know, I'm usually really into Pokemon spinoffs, and I love it when they do different things with, uh, you know, with the franchise. Like, some of my favorite Pokemon games aren't even the mainline games. Like, I love Mystery Dungeon. I love Pokemon Rangers and Conquest and things like that. So I'm always down for them to do new uh, spinoffs and stuff. But this one, I don't know. It just seems more like a cash grab than anything. Like, it feels kind of soulless to me. I don't know. It, it didn't really do anything to me. But um, and I can understand why people are upset. But, you know, you know how the internet is. They always blow things up more than it should be. And, you know, people are really upset. But yeah, uh, that's basically the whole gist of it. Uh, and they spent the whole presentation talking about it <laughs> with like fake, fake gameplay and commentators and things like that. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> so yeah. All right. So here's my take on the Pokemon stuff. Because all I saw were like the posts on like Twitter. I I didn't watch any of these directs fully. These were like the two main games I kind of mm-hmm. like picked out from them because I think that these yeah. were like the bigger ones, whether good or bad. Uh, so new Pokemon Snap, obviously people have been wanting this, like you said, since the Wii U era, which makes sense. Um, and in even probably like before that, people wanted a new Pokemon Snap. Oh yeah. But yeah, new Pokemon Snap. I'm excited for it. Um, I played the original. You know, it's a pretty simple. You know, not so uh, hard game because it's literally just like a tech demo for the N64, pretty much. Uh, and yeah. yeah, like if this is what the game's actually gonna look like when it comes out, I'm excited. Uh, hopefully this isn't like fake gameplay footage that they threw on for us because I feel like the Switch can't handle something that looks this good, but who knows? Maybe yeah. they figure something out. Maybe the levels are like 30 seconds long and there's like super long load times. Who knows? But um, yeah, I am I'm excited to see uh, what this Pokemon Snap has in store. Uh, it's probably going to be like a eShop sort of title for like maybe $20. It, it, if it's more than $20, I would be, be pretty surprised. Um, yeah. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you're literally just taking pictures of virtual uh, Pokemon. 
I, I just think it depends on the content because uh, the original Pokemon Snap is super short, even if you do everything. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'd be okay if it's like forty dollars if it has like a bunch of content to it, but it, it depends. But knowing Pokemon Company is probably gonna be like like a full sixty dollars. <laughs> we'll yeah, and if it's like that, it better be like at least like four to five hours then for like a Pokemon Snap yeah. game because you know it it'd be hard to push further than that. But under that, I think would be really tragic if it's going to be $60 Mm -hmm. anyways. Uh, Then the Pokemon Unite thing and the whole no let's go Johto. Uh, So Pokemon Unite, all I saw since I follow a lot of league personalities and things like that were just fucking memes about so uh, who's going to be freezing waves against like eight year olds and uh, Pokemon (laughs) Unite and shit like that. So I was just laughing at like that content and things like that. But yeah, the game does look cheap. The game does look like shit. Am I going to play it? Fuck yeah. I really don't care. Um, (laughs) Yeah, probably one too. <laughs> like um it's probably going to be like like you said one of those like cheap ass mobile games that's also on the switch i'm gonna play it either way and just like have fun with it you know just make the best out of it because it looks dumb and stupid and like really fun at the same time so um yeah kind of excited for this but you know uh like you said with the whole no let's go johto and things like that i get i get it that you being disappointed is one thing but like having like your anger show on like twitter and things like that like being like really really fucking like angry is kind of just like another thing because uh you're not really like entitled to anything when like these events do happen like i get that like they were or, like leading you on on one thing and then like it was just like something completely different um maybe mm-hmm. that wasn't their intent but if it was like you know that sucks but we don't know like the full story or or, like the full picture here maybe it is in development and it just wasn't ready to show by next week or whatever so we obviously don't know everything um but i get i understand it's okay to be disappointed but like being like super angry and upset is like another thing um i think that you should do that in private and not like spew it all over twitter and like other people's like tweet threads and things like that um but yeah you know let's go johto and like the funny thing is, is that, like, the Pokemon, like, fan base is, like, so, like, adamant about, like, oh, my God, fucking, uh, what's it called? What's the, uh, newest one? Sun and... Uh, Sword not, and Shield. Not fucking Sun and Moon. Yeah, yeah. Sword and Shield. It, it's, like, oh, my God, they're reusing the same animations. The trees look like shit and things like that. Like, oh, my God, they're, like, rushing a product out. But, like, at the end of the day, Game Freak knows that, like, these games are being made for kids. And they know it's going to make a profit either way. So why would they put in, like, a lot of effort in, like, making the game look super duper good and things like that? And then they're also the same fans that would be, like where the fuck's my new remake game and i'm like what Mm -hmm. i was was literally about to bring this up right now i'm like people should be like excited that we're not getting gen 4 announced right now like for the remakes because i'm like we we want the games to be better and it should delay them way more like i don't want to see the gen 4 remake until like 2022 Mm -hmm. and make sure that it's like the best it could be since i love gen 4 and i want to see it be like as best as a remake as it could be um that's why that's why i don't mind them like you know they have this year for Sword and Shield, finish up Sword, uh, Sword and Shield. Next year, they could do Let's Go Johto, since that's like, you know, like a spinoff game anyway. And then the year after that, they could do the Gen 4 remake. Like, I want them to take their time now. Like, I don't want them to rush out these big Pokemon games, because, you know, Sword and Shield, like, I, I, and I'll talk about it when I talk about the DLC. Like, it, it, I could see if they had more time, it could be, like, what I want it to be. Just, like, it just Game Freak usually doesn't have that time, because Pokemon is such a, like, a... Uh, multimedia like conglomerate mm-hmm. you know like there's so many things happening at once they can't spend too much time in one region or too much time in one game and stuff like that um but i'll talk about that when i talk about i of armor but yeah basically people gotta hold their horses let them work on the thing if you want it to be good you know so yeah uh again i'm okay with spinoffs you know I'm a little disappointed it's not something i want but i'm sure people will like this and it'll probably be fun to play for like an hour and then like i'm playing a pokemon <laughs> mobile, so yeah. yeah the pokemon mobile is definitely gonna be fun just like goof off and shit like that but like actuality like the reason why i haven't like played a pokemon game since like x and y is because like i haven't been like that super interested in one and like you know when ruby and sapphire like when those remakes were like such like a big thing like such a big like movement like we want these remakes and then they gave it to us and like nowadays i don't hear anyone really talk about them which is like disappointing because people still talk about heart gold and soul silver because those that set of like remakes were was like really really good 
Um, yeah, you, I usually think the Pokemon remakes are always good, like Fire Red, Leaf Green, uh, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Uh, I think they were all really good. Like, I didn't play Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Like, I got it at launch, but I was so disappointed by Gen Six, I never really played it because like this is my childhood generation, and I like I don't want to get like tainted by Gen Six. Mm-hmm. But um, I played it like years later. I'm like, it, it was a really good remake. It, they did a good job remaking uh, Hoenn. So. I am excited to see what they do with Gen 4, but I guess, you know, just give them time, you know? Give do. them time, indeed. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, 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 it's all good. It's all good. That's what I want. Next thing here is pretty quick. Uh, Marvel's Avengers, they are offering free upgrades to anyone that gets the PS4 slash Xbox One versions to the next gen. Uh, obviously, it's not going to, like, cross. So, like, if you have the PS4 version, you can't get the Series X version. It has to be within the same, like, PlayStation or Xbox family. Uh, and also, there's going to be cross-play between those, like, same family, like, platforms. So, like, if you got the PS4 version, but you want to play someone on the PS5, you can do that. And same thing for the Xbox. Um, so, I think that this is a good thing overall, just because, like, mm-hmm. you're not forced to double dip if you want to play this game on the next generation. If you end up liking it, because, like, they recently... Re- released a new trailer for the game and like it still looks like mm-hmm. the same gameplay that we saw like months ago it's sort of like yeah lifeless in some ways i'm not sure maybe i'm being a little too harsh on it but like it just doesn't look like super exciting to me that like a avenger game should be um but yeah you know just like free upgrades to the next generation is always a plus yeah like that i, I think a lot more games you're gonna see that i think cyberpunk is also offering this i think mm-hmm. uh I, th- I think they said that a while ago uh, but yeah, it, it makes sense, you know, like, you know, no one wants to like double dip when it's like the end of the generation. And anyway, it just helps these games anyway, since you could help drive more sales, right? Because maybe some people are like, why would I buy this now and just wait for like the PS5 version? But now you could just buy it like right now and be like, oh, okay, I'm going to get the uh, PS5 slash Xbox Series X version later. So, you know, it's, it's whatever. Um, in terms of the Avengers game itself, I think it looks fine. Like, I, I mean, I don't even know what an Avenger game would be like. Probably not, like, a looter shooter, like what it's being advertised as, which is weird. But um, there's some things that look cool. Like, there's some Thor gameplay when you're, like, flying, and that looks kind of cool. But, yeah, the, the combat doesn't really have a lot of weight to it. And it does look a little generic in terms of just, like, combat. But, I don't know. I would probably have fun with it. Probably not going to have launch because it's probably going to be a mess at launch. But I'll probably get it when it's, like, in the sale or something. Yeah, but, I've been... Um, debating myself because i've been streaming a lot more just being like should i just yeah. buy it at launch and just like play it on stream just for like the shits and giggles you know but <laughs> i mean at that point you might as well yeah right? <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm i'm not sure but like if the reviews come out and like i see that like there are clear problems with the game across from like these multiple people i might just like pull out on it because that is 60 dollars at the end at the end of the day so yeah i was at the wait and see all right, so next up, we got Animal Crossing New Horizons getting the first of its summer updates. Apparently, it's going to get another one later in, like, August, mm-hmm. I think. Uh, this one reintroduces swimming and diving, so you could get, like, you know, all the things from New Leaf where you could dive and get, like, deep-sea creatures and things like that. And I think there's going to be a new part, well, not a new part of the museum, but probably still the aquarium mm-hmm. part. And you could just donate new things. Uh, you know, there's new events and stuff, um, like, new NPCs and stuff like that, new DIY recipes and you know all that good stuff so um i think this should have been in the game to begin with <laughs> it's kind of weird that diving right like swimming and diving is right introduced in new leaf so i'm like oh it, it should probably just be in in this game anyway and it was kind of weird when it wasn't so makes sense now they're introducing it in the summer update you know people are already memeing like oh southern he- hemisphere people like it's like winners <laughs> they like goes in the water is mad code <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it, it looks like good stuff. Uh, you know, I, I expect them to reintroduce like the cafe and a bunch of other things from New Leaf as well. Uh, so it's nice to have all this uh, this drip feed of content and stuff like that. And especially when we're going to get another update really soon in uh, August. So that's cool. Uh, probably not enough to make me play the game again. I'm probably going to wait until a few updates come out and then like experience all the new stuff. You know, I don't want to just be like, oh, I could swim and dive now. It's probably not enough to bring me back personally but it's good for the people that are still playing the game like religiously like right now because mm-hmm. i know there's a lot of people that still do that so yeah, yeah shout out to everyone still playing the game every goddamn day you are a mm-hmm. trooper and you are enjoying the game as m- much as i wish i could honestly but i stopped playing the game for maybe a month now i'm not entirely sure but this summer update definitely looks interesting i'm um, watching your uh animal crosser player sort of like dive into water and just like swim <laughs> villager. yeah villager whatever bro <laughs> but yeah just watching them like swim and like new things you know 
it's nice that Nintendo is still like putting new stuff out there for those people that really are religiously playing the game like daily and things like that. Um, so maybe I'll jump back into it. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, just because it just, I don't know. New Horizons doesn't have that same flair once I, when I played New Leaf back then. I'm not entirely sure. No, I, I get what you mean. Like, I, I think I played New Horizons way more than New Leaf, but yeah, I felt like New Leaf definitely had a lot more content at launch, it feels. Like, I, I feel the like New Horizon was a bit rushed just to get it out, like, I guess during this time. I don't know if they predicted this. Like, obviously not, but... Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, it feel it does feel a bit rushed though. Like I feel like something should just been in the base game already, and I feel like this is one of them. But who, who's to say? It's still so like crazy. So I guess it doesn't really matter. And we're gonna get the other that content in free DLC. So I'm not really complaining. Uh, you know, I have 80 hours in it, so like I think that's enough time. Like, I had my money's worth. So yeah, anything they add is just like cherries on top. So yeah. So yeah, it's always good to get new content for that game. All right. So now we're getting into gonna get into our recent activities. I can't talk. <laughs> um, so I got a lot of uh, I got a lot on my plate, and I'm gonna close with uh, the 13 Reasons Why season. So I'm gonna let you go first. All right. So first, I beat it Xenoblade. Well, I beat the base game, 100 percent it. It's a fantastic remake or remaster, whatever you want to call it. Um, all again, I already talked about this last time, but all the quality of life, you know, uh, features like the quest tracking, things just being easier to do and like the UI being really clean now is all very appreciated. Just makes the game less of a chore to play. Um, cause you know, I don't even look at the wiki every two seconds to see who I need to talk to or whatever. Um, the graphics look way better. I love the character models. The cutscenes just look so much better cause in the Wii version, they look super crusty. Um, the frame rate, you know, it's all good. Uh, you know, everything just looks great. Like it's, it's a fantastic way to play this game. And I'm happy it's on a system to actually like handle the game now. Cause you know, on the Wii, you know, it's like pretty crusty looking. And on the 3DS, I don't know why you even play this game on the 3DS, <laughs> to be honest. But yeah, I, I love all the extra features and things they did. It was, it was fantastic. And I, you know, I, I enjoy the game. It's still one of my favorite games ever. Um, and I played, I'm almost done with the new, like, extra, like, epilogue mode they have, Future Connected. And it's really good as well. Um, they didn't really update the battle system that much. It's not like in the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 uh, expansion. What's like a totally new combat system. This one's basically the same, just with like a new, like chain attack type thing. So it's not that different. But um, it's cool that they got all the voice actors, you know, from the English version to reprise their role. Shulk is still Shulk, and Melia is still Melia, and stuff like that. Um, and it does a good job just sort of wrapping up any loose plot threads that were left from the first game. Since uh, Melia, she's sort of like the main character in this game, gets a lot more closure, which I think is really needed since. Uh, in all of Xenoblade Chronicles, once she just kind of gets shitted on, like, <laughs> like she just she doesn't have a good time. So it's good to see her like really resolve a lot of these issues in this game. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm really enjoying the story. I like all the new characters and stuff like that. A lot more voice acting, which is nice, uh, since I get they have more money, I guess. <laughs> um, and the, the just the new area looks beautiful. Like you could tell this is made for like the Switch. You know, a lot of the older areas in the Wii version they still look really good with the uh, makeup from this uh, d- uh, definitive edition. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's still, there's still, like, Wii game, er- like, areas. This game really takes advantage of it being on Switch and looks more like a Xenoblade Chronicles 2 area. And it just looks really nice. So And the music's fantastic, too. But, yeah, I am definitely am enjoying the, uh, the sort of epilogue mode at the end here. Uh, I don't know if it's worth just buying the game just for that, since it's not that long. I'm, like, nine hours in, and I don't think I have too much left to do. So, yeah, I definitely think if you're going to play this remake, you know, play through the whole game again, because it's worth it anyway, so... Uh, but if you just want to play that little epilogue thing at the end, I think wait for a sale because I, I don't know if it's like fully worth to buy like a sixty dollar game just like a ten hour thing. But I don't know, may, maybe it is for you. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's fantastic. So next, I'm finally doing a thing I should have done like years Hog. ago. Right, I'm playing Sly. <laughs> yeah, so, like, so I want to. I felt like playing a platformer anyway because I've been playing a lot of like RPGs and like you know other things like that. So I'm like, all right, I feel like playing a platformer. I'm gonna play Sly. So I beat Sly 1 again. You know, I already beat Sly 1, I think, like, twice. It's, like, my third time doing mm-hmm. it. Uh, so, um, you know, I'm pretty well familiar with Sly 1 at this point. And I guess I could go briefly into Sly 1. You know, obviously, like, a lot of these PS2 platformers, the first game is always, like, way different from the other ones. Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, Sly 1 is basically just a platformer through and through. It's not really much of, a like, a sneaky stealth game like the other ones. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it feels like Crash Bandicoot, basically. Yeah. And it's good, you know, like, it's still, like, it's still really solid platforming. You know, Sly's really fun to control, all his different moves and stuff like that. 
Um, but yeah, you're not really going to get a lot of sneaky gameplay and stuff like that. You know, it's just like Jack 1, where that game was just a collect-a-thon, and, the, and then the other games were GTA. And then where Ratchet and Clank, Ratchet feels super clunky to control in the first game because he can't strafe, he has no upgradable health, really. Um, his weapons don't upgrade, so yeah. Um, Sly 1 is very much different from the other two. But it's still a, a really good platformer to play. Um, one complaint I do have with it is a lot of the power-ups are very useless. Mm-hmm. Um, since in Sly 2 and 3 and the other ones, you could like sort of map them to different buttons. This one you have to cycle through with like the triangle button or whatever, and then you could use it. Uh, most of the time, I just keep the dodge roll or the like the or the actual roll, or Sly just rolls around because like I like going fast. <laughs> uh, the other ones really have like no point in using. Like you get slow down time, but it's like you get slow down too, so there's no real point to use it. Or you could go fast, but it just it's weird. So yeah, that that's the only downside of the game. But besides that, it's a great platformer. Love it. You know, it's great. Uh, Sly two. I'm about halfway through it right now. You know, like I usually am, but this time I am gonna beat it because I usually <laughs> where I stop. But yeah, I, I really like Sly 2. It's, it's a really big improvement. You know, all the models look fantastic. The game is a lot longer and bigger. You know, there's a lot more things to do. Um, the game sort of ditches the whole level-to-level mechanic and goes for missions now. And I just love how the game is set up where, you know, you have to steal a clockwork part from, you know, one of the, uh, the claw gang people. And then uh, it's set up like a heist. Like, it feels like I'm playing like a, a kid's version of GTA Five, where you're like, all right, we got to do this, then we could do this, and then we could go for the final heist. It's just a really cool thing to do. And, you know, you feel more like a thief, like pit people, you know, this like stealth moves to do um, and things like that. You know, every, every character in, you know, Bentley, Murray, and Sly all have their own missions and things to do for, you know, to make the heist happen. I just think it's a cool setup for, like, you know, each world to have, you know. It's always fun to see what the final heist mission is going to be and things like that. And the missions are just fun to do. Um, the only downside with Sly 2 is I don't think Bentley is that fun to play as. You know, usually they don't even make you play as Bentley. It's like you play as Bentley to get up to a point and then you have to do, like, something not related to his gameplay. It's like, oh, go on a turret or a hack or something like mm-hmm. that. You know, I definitely think Sly and Murray are more fun to play as because, you know, Sly Sly. He's really fun to platform and do all that stuff with and Murray's just fun to beat the crap out of everything um but yeah I know I know Bentley gets more fun to play as in the in the third game but but yeah overall Sly 2 is fantastic it's a really good upgrade from Sly 1 just like Ratchet 2 and Jack 2 uh and I'm excited to actually beat the goddamn <laughs> game now because it's been like years so yeah I'm, I'm probably gonna beat Sly 2 and then go 3 and 4 and just like beat up the whole series like it's, it's been something I want to do forever you know Sucker Punch I love Sucker Punch I just never give their games enough time a day. I'm probably going to do the same thing with Infamous as well. I do want to play the Infamous games after the Sly games, so I'm probably going to do that as well. But yeah, overall, great platformers. And yeah, they, they usually get overshadowed by Ratchet and Jack, but they really shouldn't because Sly is great. Agreed, agreed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, next uh, is another game I want to play for a while, Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, obviously, after seeing the PS5 event, which we're going to talk about, they announced Horizon Zero Dawn 2 or Horizon Forbidden West, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, and this is a game I want to play since they showed it at E3, like in like 2016 or whatever. I'm like, this game looks super cool and I want to play it. And then when it finally came out, it came out like about a, no, like a few weeks before Breath of the Wild. I'm like, I don't really want to play a game that's kind of like similar to Breath of the Wild. So I'm just going to wait for, for Breath of the Wild to come out and play that, then play this. But then I just didn't end up playing Horizon Zero Dawn. So it's always been something I felt bad about not playing. So now that I'm finally playing it, it's uh, it's very good. It's basically like, you know, what you expect from a Sony like AAA game, you know, open world, bunch of things to do and things like that. But what really sets it apart is obviously the gameplay and theme being that, you know, you're like a hunter and things like that. You could like scavenge parts, make a bunch of cool like hunting weapons. You can have like trip wires and bow and arrows and a bunch of cool like bow based weapons it's really cool and it's really fun to hunt down the metal robots and everything like or the metal robot dinosaur things because you know each one has their own like way to take down i almost feel like you're playing like a little monster hunter game just like you know the monsters don't take so long to kill in this game because you know it's you know just wildlife or whatever Mm -hmm. um but yeah the, the game really hooks you in the beginning with like all the things like you know why is this like this or why is that like that what happened to aloy's like origins like what what's going on like the game really makes you ask a lot of questions in the beginning which really makes you want to figure out what's going on with this world. And it's just very interesting. Like, the world is super colorful and it's very nice to look at. You know, you want to know why there's robot dinosaurs everywhere. It's, it's just a really cool theme. And I've always, I fell in love with it the moment I saw an E3. So I'm really happy to finally be uh, playing it. Um, but yeah, it's very good. I guess the only downside I could say is it's very generic open world type of thing. You know, you have side quests and towers and things like that. You, you know how it mm-hmm. is. Uh, I guess that's the only downside I could say about it. But it's still really fun to play. I. 
I really enjoy like the moment to moment gameplay. So yeah, I'm really enjoying that. Uh, really fun. Yeah. And the last thing over here is the Pokemon Eye of Armor. So like I was saying before, I think Eye of Armor is actually a really good step in the right direction for this thing. Uh, I don't know if it's worth because you can't really buy the DLC separately. You have to buy the season pass, which is thirty dollars. So, is it worth thirty dollars? No, I, I do not think it's worth thirty dollars to buy this <laughs> right now. I'll say wait until the next DLC and then buy this. But I think Eye of Armor is definitely the step in the right direction. The wild area in this game is so much better than the old wild area, and I really like the wild area in the first game. But this one feels so much better. Um, basically, the game this DLC has no routes. It's just one big wild area. So you're just going through the whole game. You can move your camera and like it's just really cool. Um, the wild area is not just like this big flat plain with like nothing really to do. You know, there's like, you know, there's like swamps and forests and caves and deserts and things like that. That it feels like a whole Pokemon game in this one little tiny island that's all controllable in 3D. And this is more in line with what I want. This is what I want all Pokemon games to be. Like I don't want no more routes or anything like that. I want the whole game to just be a wild area, like a normal RPG nowadays. You know, something like Xenoblade, how Xenoblade is just all like one big area and you just move the camera like you would expect from games nowadays. It's basically what I want Pokemon to be nowadays. And, and now I, I could see they could do it now with this DLC. And it brings me a lot of hope to see what the next DLC is going to be and what the next Pokemon game in general is going to be. Um, I don't know if Gen 4 is gonna, the Gen 4 remake is going to be like this necessarily because, you know, it's a remake and the, they're probably going to keep the routes, which I'm, I'll be okay with. But for Gen 9, I definitely want them to make it full 3D like this because it's, it's about time, you know? Mm -hmm. The moment you went on Switch, you should, like, just commit to this sort of, like, gameplay style at this point. Um, but besides that, you know, the story is cool, I guess. It's only, like, two hours. Like, it's really not long at all, like, the story for the thing. Like, basically what you're paying for is for the Legendary you get through the campaign and for the Wild Area itself. And, like, there's some cool things you could do, um... There's like a bunch of diglets around that you can find, so they act like sort of like collectibles. And I really like this because it really makes you have a per, uh, like a point to like explore every area of the wild area. And it, it's just cool to. I always like collectibles, and it just, it just gives the wild area more meaning, you know. So yeah, I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of new returning Pokemon, so I'm sure people will enjoy that if they want to like capture a specific Pokemon for that game. Um, but besides that. Uh, that's about it. There's not too much post game in this DLC either. You know, just more raid battles and things like that. Uh, you could, there's some secret fights you could do. I still need to do those. But besides that, you're basically paying for the wild area, and I don't think it's def is worth it. But I, I definitely think it's the right and step direction. I, I, I enjoy playing through the DLC. But yeah, if you want my opinion, I'll say wait until the frozen Fro frozen tundra comes out. Because yeah, this game it doesn't really offer a whole lot of content. Isle of Armor. But if you already liked Sword and Shield then I don't see any reason not to, like, buy this. And last thing I've been doing is I've been watching a lot of Attack on Titan. I'm almost done with the first season. Uh, I keep hearing how good it is. Like, season 3 was apparently, like, super, really, really good. So I'm like, okay, I should watch this already. And, yeah, it's very good. Um, you know, it's a very dark anime, and, I, I you know, I always like that. I'm not really into um, slice of life things that much, so I've always liked it when an anime has, like, a goal it wants to go towards or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the story keeps on moving, things like that. And this one definitely does. You know, I love a lot of death and dying and stuff. I don't know why I'm weird <laughs> when it comes to an anime. I just want to see, like, fights and people dying. And, yeah, this show definitely does that. The despair a lot of the characters go through is, like, really good and well done. It's kind of why I like ReZero a lot because, you know, you can really tell when a character is just emotionally done with everything. And this show really capsulates that. And this is capsulate like how soldiers feel in general. Like yeah, they're not fighting other humans, but they're fighting the titans. But you can really feel how hopeless it feels, and like like all their PTSD and things like that. It's like it's super good. Um, there's a lot of good twists and stuff like that that I never saw. Like I never even knew about. I feel like the, like some of the twists I feel like I should have been spoiled years ago, but I never knew about. So that was fun to like just like whoa what? So yeah, uh, overall great show. I think it's worth the hype. I know season two kind of dips a bit. So I'm not really looking forward to that, but um, season three apparently makes it really worth it. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to watch more of that. So yeah. That Interesting. Go. I've seen spoilers for that anime, but like I have yeah. no context, so I don't know what the fuck's going on, but... <laughs> yeah, it's I, I, there's some things I'm like, oh, that's where this is going? Okay. <laughs> so, All right, yeah. now we get to my shit. I'll try to be as fast as possible, because I got to talk about 13 Reasons Why, and that's going to take a while. So, uh, first up, League of Legends. I haven't played since the new patch came out. I honestly have not been playing all that much because I've been trying to stream more and just, like, 
playing other games and just enjoying that because I realized that League was not the brightest spot in my life, so I kind of taken a step back from the game, unfortunately. But um, with the recent changes, they gutted Yumi and they uh, they added reporting and champ select. So I don't know if that's going to change anything, but uh, okay. it does eager me to come back. Uh, so maybe I'll do that next week or whatever. Uh, TFT. I've been playing a lot of TFT, actually. I've literally been a cybernetic spammer just because Vayne <laughs> is a new unit and she's really good and really e fun to play around. Um, so I've been playing a lot of TFT. I'm like plat 2 now, 0 LP, because, uh, you know, when you take 7th or 8th, you kind of lose all of the LP you gained that day or, you know, you had. So I'm lucky, but TFT is definitely a really, really fun uh, aspect of League these days. Uh, Rank Fit Adventure. I've been playing a lot more of that. Uh, sort of, you know, quarantine, still things like that, COVID going around. Uh, just been mm. trying to get some exercise and get the blood flowing sort of thing. So that's been fun. Uh, two games, actually three games I've been playing on stream. Uh, Ratchet and Clank for the PS4. I played that entire game on stream in one sitting. I was like five, six hours or something like that. I was kind of insane for doing that as like my big comeback for streaming. I kind of, and then just like <laughs> sat down and just played that game like mindlessly because the gameplay is fun, but the uh, story is not faithful to the original because Ratchet and Clank no. are kind of just like, <laughs> hey, we're buddies. And I'm like, I don't like that. You know, you guys weren't buddies at first and then you guys grew into friends mm -hmm. and that was great. Um, then I actually played Spider-Man PS4. Uh, my, my main goals when streaming it were to finish the DLC for 100%, which I did. Then I started New Game Plus, and I did it on Ultimate Difficulty because I wanted to, to mm -hmm. go and get the trophy attached to that. So Yeah, I need to do that. <laughs> so I did that, and surprisingly, like because you're on New Game Plus Ultimate Difficulty, it literally just means when you get hit, you're going to take a shit ton of damage. Like That's about it, um, which makes sense because uh, when you're playing as Spider-Man, you don't want to feel as much like wiggle room when you're like fighting and things like that because when you get hit, they fucking hit. So... But I actually finished New Game Plus as well. And I was like, wow, I actually finished that game. Because after playing The Last of Us Part 2 and then going through New Game Plus for Spider-Man, I was like, oh, yeah, wait. Last of Us is actually longer than this open world game, which is kind of crazy. Uh, That's crazy. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> next game here, Evans Remains. I, hashtag free product was not paid for or anything like that. They literally just gave me the free game and said, have fun with it. Uh, and this game is really good. It's $7. It is a mystery thriller puzzle platformer with visual novel elements. That sounds like a lot, but the way they mix it all together is like really, really good. I did a full video on it. Uh, it's like four minutes long. If you want to check that out, more fleshed out thoughts on the game and things like that. But did that. going to skip over part two because we're going to talk about la that last uh, on the show. Uh, I watched all of Haikyuu. <laughs> oh I watched <laughs> the rest of Haikyuu. Um, that is a fantastic sports anime. As a person that doesn't watch a lot of anime, this one's really good. It is super fun to just watch these uh, high schoolers just like go through the trials and tribulations of like just being a team and like just being on a volleyball club and things like that. So, yeah, Haikyuu is definitely really, really good. Uh, I picked back up Hunter x Hunter. Uh, I was on like episode 40 or something like that when I uh, last left it off and I kind of I kind of picked it up at episode 40 as like a sort of like recap because I watched like episodes like 40 through like 45 or something like that but as just like a way to like make sure that I know everything. I started at 40 then just sort of just like worked my way up uh, mm -hmm. and now I got through the... I got through all of the arcs there uh, with the Kurapika arc. Uh, that was really good with the whole, like, uh, the, uh, what's it called? The, fuck, what's the word? But that arc was yeah, pretty no, good. I never watched that um, <laughs> And then the one after that is the uh, the uh, game arc where, like, Gone and Kill You I go into a video game. And that one is pretty good as well. And then after that is the, uh, the bug arc, as I like to call it, because... Um, there's this bug and like they're eating people and then the, that bug makes other pe people that are hybrids and things like that and it's very fucking weird but it's still <laughs> it it's still weird. Hunter Hunter and it's really fucking good like surprisingly and from like episode 40 now I'm on like episode like 104 like Oh like I, <laughs> Wait, how long is it? It's only 148 episodes, so I'm closing oh. towards the end. Uh, but this bug arc's fucking massive, and I'm just like, when is this shit gonna end? Because 
like a lot of things are happening so but hunter hunter is just a really really good anime and i'm surprised it didn't win anime of the decade or whatever because my mm-hmm. hero one or some other or like newer anime one and i'm just like what like i get hunter hunter isn't like as popular as like my hero or like demon slayer and things like that but like this one's like really fucking good so that's good yeah i probably i, probably pick, I should watch another like shonen there's a shonen thing right yeah it's pretty much a shonen <laughs> yeah uh i read the last of us american dream which is a prequel to the first game and it tells the story of how ellie and riley met and then you play bo- uh left behind and you get to see on how that stuff unfolds in terms of like ellie's story and things like that but american dream it's like a four issue sort of like comic to give you an idea of who ellie was before the games and it's pretty good i really did like it uh, you know, it is only four issues, so it's not exactly all that long. Uh, but what is long is fucking 13 Reasons Why Season 4. Ten episodes long. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Ten episodes long. Uh, just going to give you guys a quick recap in terms of what I think of Season 3. Because Season 3 was a fucking shit show. I originally talked about Season 3 on Episode 19 of this podcast. So if you want to go back and listen to my original thoughts there. I didn't talk about spoilers for that. Just because, you know, I was just... I just didn't want to, but... Now, I'm, I'm going to talk about spoilers for this entire season, so you guys get a better idea and understanding of what I think of the series. Uh, so, I'm also going to spoil season three, if you care, or whatever. Uh, but yeah, pretty much, uh, Ani shouldn't have been the main leading, driving force of the last season, and her messing around with Bryce didn't help either, and she was messing with my boy Clay's emotions. Like, why the fuck <laughs> you gotta do that to my boy Clay? Uh, but the redemption arc that Bryce goes through in season three was super forced and since you're supposed to literally hate this guy for season one and two and then season three is like oh my god he's like this sympathetic character nah you're just like forcing this down our throats and like i ain't buying this fuck price um and then the jumping back and forth between the past and present in season three didn't help at all it kind of made the story really confusing for me uh and it only started to make sense once we got to the end of the season because i was like oh so this is how this is how things are going on and things like that um there were some memorable moments in the uh, season for season three, like Tony's episode and the finale. But the overall season is just really, really bad and shouldn't have been watched more than once. Uh, but going into season four, uh, this is a much more clay focused season. Uh, he's having like panic attacks and like he doesn't want to be helped by other people despite him having like these problems that he's having. And like it's really weird because he's the one that's willing to put everyone else before himself and like now other people want to help him and he's like no 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 and i'm like all right bro that's a little weird uh clay <laughs> is fucking crazy in this season like my man's goes ape shit uh and like he goes to see like this therapist because of like the many problems that he's having throughout the season and it was kind of fair for his character because he was literally losing his mind like in multiple early on episodes um and i think the way that the writers use this sort of like therapist angle was so we could see what clay is thinking more clearly since he is obviously mentally unstable and he's not all there in the head uh when the season starts clay and ani are together and i was not fucking sold on this because by the end of it they are not together and i was like i fucking knew it there's only like, <laughs> there's only 10 episodes and like i'm not exactly sure when they broke up but like a couple episodes in they fucking break up and i'm like why did you st-? whatever um and you know like them like asking each other out to the dance or whatever was like cute and shit like that but like they pretty much made her they made them a couple so ani can be relevant within the season and it turns out that i was right when i wrote that statement i i wrote this in my notes before they broke up and then they broke up and then they write her out of the show because like something happens with her mom like they just write her out and i'm like all right (laughs) like um (laughs) and then the season pretty much starts with like um bonnie being like seen everywhere and like hallucinations within like clay's mind with like monty and bryce and like (laughs) the funny thing is is that despite them killing off bryce the actor that plays bryce he's been in every single episode of 13 reasons why and i'm just like that's crazy (laughs) why the fuck do you kill him off just to have him in season four in every episode still like what (laughs) it just seems like so dumb but you know because uh clay does some really dumb shit because of these hallucinations um one of these things is that uh a girl is sort of drunk and then her her like male friend that we don't know is her boyfriend actually brings her upstairs and clay's like 
I'm not gonna let this shit happen, you know, like, he could probably abuse her and things like that, but in reality, like, that didn't happen, he kind of walked into the E room and saw, like, hallucination Bryce there, and he's, like, talking to him, and then, like, the boyfriend comes, he's like, what the fuck are you doing in here, and then it's, like, a whole thing, and I was just like, fucking Clay, bro, you're doing some really dumb shit, um, and other characters like Jess and Winston, who, Winston is a new character that I'll get into, I was going to say, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, But they also see a Bryce and Monty, respectively. So Winston is a new character from season three. Um, he pretty much gave, like, an a, a sort of, like, sympathetic angle to Monty before he, like, died or whatever. Um, and, like, Monty's, like, closeted gay. And Winston's gay. And, like, they had, like, a moment in the last season at, like, a party or whatever. Um, and Winston's pretty much here for this season to uh let me see if i could go through my notes um winston's his only purpose in this season is to uh is to bust the fucking liberty kids um and like i was 100 percent rooting for him like 100 percent. i was like bro these fucking these liberty like idiots like they've been hiding way too much from like every one else and i was just like bro just like just fucking bust these kids because like man like the amount of fucked up shit and the amount of dumbass shit these kids have done, like, they should be in jail. Like, they've been hiding murders and, like, other secrets and things like that. Like, Winston, I was like, bro, let's fucking get it. Let's bust these Liberty kids. I'll get to his conclusion more towards the end because I got a lot more notes here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Justin is back from rehab and, and, like, he's trying to be, like, his best self. You know, he's being, like, a, a very, e- e- like, goody two-shoes, sort of like a season one Clay where he's, like, you know, trying to be, like, by the books and, like, very, e- like, good about it. And, like, uh, I was like, all right, you know, like, if this is where they want his character to evolve and things like that. But, like, it seemed, like, kind of forced. And I was right because he literally relapses after his mom dies. And I was like, <laughs> that sucks. But, like, you literally relapsed right after that. And I was like, ah. And, yeah. And... And then he eventually gets back with Jess, which, like, that was, like, a main, like, conflict between them, like, in the beginning of the season. Like, he was, like, I'm trying to work on myself, Jess. You know, like, I can't be with you. And then she, like, gets all bitchy about it because that's just Jess's character because a lot of these characters are defined by, like, the, sh- the shit that has happened to them. So, like, Clay is, like, the guy who, like, loved the girl that killed herself. And, like, Jess is the one that, like, survived the traumatic thing that happened to her. Um, I'm not going to say it because people censor that word on twitter in these days and i don't want to get canceled but yeah you know <laughs> what happened to her obviously fucking sucked but like her being a bitch throughout every other season is just like i don't like her whatever uh alex's sort of like arc in this season is like trying to find out if he's gay and i'm like all right bro you know i think you were trying to figure that out since like season two so hopefully in season four <laughs> you'll finally figure that out bro um and alex's dad bro man that guy's the fucking homie man this guy is still like you know super chill and um i think he knows that like alex killed bryce i think it's like hinted at during the season because i'll just i'll just skip to what happens uh with uh uh alex's dad in the end so like alex's dad like by the end of of the season kind of knew that like alex killed bryce uh which is why like the final scene is um sheriff diaz he closes that case for good with bryce and you know uh, he's like, uh, you know, like family's everything, you know, like this and that. So he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and close that case. And like Alex's dad just like sigh of relief. And I'm like, all right, well then, I guess these fucking kids get to get to get away with murder now. I guess because <laughs> the corrupt police is whatever. Uh, this show was already dumb as as is, but Zach, oh my god, man, they fucked over Zach's character so badly. So like last season. You know, his knee got fucked up because Bryce was, like, jealous because uh, Zach was, like, talking to Chloe and shit like that. So, just fucking broke his knee. Um, oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, like, oh, my God. The scene, the uh, the uh, football scene, which, like, they talked to throughout season three. That scene yeah. when, when Bryce just, like, fucking full-blown with, like, his football helmet on and everything just, like, charges right at Zach's knee. I was like, damn, bro, that fucking sucks. Because he just ruined his entire, like football college career and things like that but anyways this season bro zach is a complete fuck boy man my man's is going to <laughs> frat parties my man's drinking non-stop my man does not give a fuck so yeah uh zach is definitely gonzo uh he gets uh he gets offered to coach for liberty next year because the uh 
the uh, coach at the e school still like believes in him that he believes that he's like a good character like he remembers who he was in like season one and two sort of thing so he's like you're still like a good like football player and you know what to do so he offers him like that position um and yeah like i don't know i it just feels like that they kind of just like fucked over his character or whatever um tony this season man my man's my man's looking like 30 like od like <laughs> <laughs> yeah he does. uh and he had a scene where he encountered a cop in the school which like i'm pretty sure 13 reasons why i didn't know that like the black lives matter movement and like the police protests were gonna happen but there are multiple scenes within this season with minority characters specifically hispanic characters that get like uh, pushed around by like the uh, cops in this school because like you know so many fuck so much fucked up shit has happened here that they just have cops and like other er, like security measures and, and uh, things like that so uh he has a scene with the cop but the cop ends up being like a fucking homie like the cop <laughs> ends up because like later there's like this like fucking like protest or like rally outside of the e school because they don't want security cameras or some shit like they don't want the amount of like high security at the school which like the cameras is like fucking dumb but like the other area shit that was like implemented for the e-school makes sense so like there's like this like protest and like tony's like you know battling the fucking cops or whatever and like the uh cop ends up being like hey yo just fucking get the hell out of here he like sort of like lets him go and also this cop pushes uh tony's arc of like being like a fighter sort of thing like he he like invites him to like this like fighting ring that like they do like weekly or some shit i don't exactly know what that was about but i was like hey you know like that's cool you know tony gets to do stuff in this season because he has a contract <laughs> or whatever but um there's another scene where like clay all right so like <laughs> clay and tony have obviously been like best friends from like episode one season one right and like yeah there's a part in this season where tony says i don't know clay anymore and then at the end he's like I love you man and i'm like what huh? <laughs> like he goes from Good. that in like the uh, school riot episode to prom where he's like i love you bro and i'm like huh so i don't know if that's just like a writing mistake or whatever but like i that that obviously like did not sit well with me um i already said that i i, I don't fucking like jessica still uh jessica starts messing with this new character named diego and obviously he is hispanic and they, and this is the other scene where uh he he gets messed up by the uh, cops or whatever but diego's whole character is that he's also trying to figure out what happened to monty because he highly respected monty and things like that so like uh and like diego messed with clay which is like sort of like another level of it where like diego messed with clay's head and like doing like these pranks with like you know dead bodies and like fake blood and things like that and like <laughs> oh <God>. yeah like <laughs> some really like fucked up shit and like there's like other or like time jumping things here and there where like so like diego and clay obviously get suspended for like doing that shit and then the next episode jumps back to them going back to school so it's like i think it was like a week or so later or some shit like that and i was like all right i guess we're just time jumping here and there which happens a lot like they just like briefly like mention but that was like last week and i was like oh okay i guess i guess we jumped a week or some shit um so <laughs> yeah uh and then some other all right so <laughs> the funny thing is 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 when they're uh, when they're talking about the uh, security cameras ani's like but these these school security cameras it's an invasion of privacy i'm like bitch are you fucking serious like security cameras in a school <laughs> are you kidding me like it's not that serious like if, if it was security cameras in every single locker that's another thing but if it's yeah. this is like down the hall just so like they can see what the fuck's going on like it's not an invasion of privacy like what is going on here um moving on uh this is like all right so diego and friends on like the the uh, pranks uh, they participate in like this like early like plotline where like this mystery person starts calling Clay uh, from Monty's phone number because when Clay tries to call it 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 leaves a voicemail with like Monty's like you know voice and things like that and I'm just like all right who the fuck is this person and then it ends up being Diego and friends and I'm like all right that that's a little weird uh, but okay you know they're sort of just like trying to like mess with them and trying to like to go and get to the bottom of this um, and then Charlie comes in who plays it into uh alex's plotline so right when this season started i was like who the fuck is charlie like i forgot who the fuck charlie was he was a character in season three that was sort of like friends with monty and sort of like the like new football player and like he was sort of like being taught by monty and things like that but um yeah but he's just he's just not like monty like at all obviously because he ends up having a relationship with alex and things like that which was like cool you know i don't have a, a real problem with this just because you know like it was 
fun and sort of cute just like seeing them sort of like interact and things like that um and then tyler all right so they did my boy tyler dirty this season they try to like they try to bring back the whole like school shooting thing oh, like no. they tried to like <laughs> allude to that but like he just ended up he was just helping out the cops and like he was just trying to do the right thing but like tony and clay were like yo bro he's gonna fucking shoot up the school again so like there's like a whole episode where like they're like tailing him and like that like trying to figure out like what the fuck is he doing and like it just turns out that he's just he's changed guys what the fuck like <laughs> but yeah uh tyler is just like trying to live his own life leave my mans alone that's what i said in my notes here um but yeah uh and then some other things oh my god jess and justin all right so when i say that that like they get back together bro they they fucking messing with their each other's emotions like od so like obviously like jess gets with jessica and they just is like doing some other shit like they are they are full on just like mental warfare with each other and i'm just like <laughs> all right this is gonna keep it entertaining for me whatever um oh my god the amount of like random new characters that are like related to like older characters so like sheriff diaz who was like a pretty like prominent character in season three was like the one that uh, in, in that like famous scene like clay jensen you are under arrest for the murder of uh bryce walker things like that bro his daughter's in this fucking show and like she she and clay like have like a it's not like a sex scene but like clay loses his virginity to her and i was just like this could have just been some random ass girl but like they had to like bring it back to her or like him or or, or whatever um and then like another character was uh, monty's sister uh she's a new student at the school and things like that so like just like random new characters just like being related to older ones i was just like all right like i guess um and the show is still about everyone being sus and never really knowing everything fully until the end which is very true um so uh during like so the entire like first like eight episodes is like figuring out uh, in terms of, like who's like fucking around with like the uh liberty school and like liberty like group that we know of so like the first episode opens with like monty was framed and things like that like written on like the uh, principal like door or some shit and like it turns mm -hmm. out that like clay has like personality like disso disassociation or some shit like that oh my God. so like he's been doing this the entire time and, and like he doesn't remember any of it and like clay has just been keeping secrets from himself and things like that um the uh the uh, dean that is in this season he's just randomly gay like in the uh, in the uh, prom episode he just he just reveals that he's gay and i'm like all right i i i guess i don't know um the final episode is an hour and 40 minutes long and i was just like holy fuck they oh my they god really <laughs> didn't want to make episode 11 but okay um so the la the uh, last episode opens up with um uh, justin uh having aids slash hiv positive uh okay. so like the prom episode which is episode nine it ends with him collapsing and i was like fuck dude and then the entire episode is about um um uh what's it called like him being in the the hospital and things like that and like the first episode teases like this like funeral thing like this uh funeral like uh ceremony i'm not exactly sure if that's the right word but you know it's like we will remember this person you know in like the uh, good light and whatever uh so like that scene and then going to the final episode where i see justin in a hospital bed and then they're talking about on how like he's not gonna make it and things like that i was like man like why'd you like build that storyline up just to like drag it out this entire last episode like that just didn't make sense to me um okay so going back to winston so winston gets hella close to figuring out the bryce slash monty case like exactly like who did what and and, uh, and uh, things like that and he thinks jessica did it but alex who like you know he's trying to figure out if he's gay or not and like the first like early episode he has like a relationship with like winston and things like that uh he just like straight up tells him everything he just meets with them like right outside of uh monet's it, it just tells him everything and i'm like what the fuck bro you just you're just gonna tell this kid like hey bro i murdered him go to the fucking cops my dad's the uh the the uh cop there or whatever and i'm just like so you're gonna tell him everything but like why though because winston bro man my man my man just didn't do it he just didn't bust these kids and like the winston plot line like in and of itself which is hella weak like they literally they literally dropped it like halfway through the season to like focus on other shit because there's only 
as you can tell, there's way too many characters, way too many plot lines. I can and- see. I don't even know, like, <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what characters are what anymore. <laughs> and because of this, there's just too much shit going on. And, like, Winston's, like, plot line just, like, fails because of it. Like, they dropped it halfway through the E season in. And only he, he comes up occasionally when he's like, yeah, bro, I just found out about X info or some shit like that. And I'm like okay like can we get more of that and then like the rest of the episodes like focus on something else or whatever and i'm just like all right so uh tony gets a uh, offer to go to college in nevada uh because of like his like fighting skills or whatever uh and like you know like one of the fights like he fights a fucking white supremacist and like he he, okay no, 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 no. like straight up he calls tony like some like really like bad words and i'm just like okay uh-huh. so we're doing this shit now uh, but he doesn't want to go because, like, he doesn't want to leave the uh, auto shop and, like, financial support for his family in Mexico. But he has, like, this, like, Skype call with his dad. And his dad was like, yo, that that auto shop was never my dream. Tony, you were my dream. And then he says, don't fuck up my dream, bro. <laughs> yo, my, <laughs> oh my God, God, man. I was fucking dying when he said that because, like, he's like, Tony, you're my dream. So don't fuck up my dream. And I was like, dude, like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> like, I was honestly fucking hysterically dying when he said that because that's just funny but you know like very like heartfelt um other plot line threads what's it called um winston so like going back to winston so he finally realizes because he doesn't bust the liberty kids it's because he realized that he didn't love monty but he loved the idea of monty because he had one interaction with monty and then he died and then he loved the idea that he had of him of that night sort of thing so, like, he didn't fully, you know, Monty, and then that's just, like, the plot of, of just, like, you love someone because you like the idea of them, which, like, whatever. Um, Diego's arc, so, like, they pretty much just wrap up his character with, um, uh, with you know, him and Jess in the hospital after um, uh, Justin is, like, HIV positive. They're both in, like, this, like, facility to, like, test if they're also HIV positive, which they're not. Um, and he also drops the fucking case of busting these Liberty kids because... Of Justin's death, he views it similar to his situation with Monty, like miss people like this after that and shit like that. I don't know exactly what I'm typing here, but hopefully it makes sense. That's exactly what I wrote in my notes. But yeah, Diego also fucking drops it. Um, and then uh, Diego's sister, Estella. So I was like, does she have a bigger purpose? Fuck no. <laughs> she just exists in the show as a side character, and I guess goes to prom with Tyler and you know gets close with her and things like that. But like, it's nothing like past that sort of thing like she she's just a side character that also happens to be monty's sister so whatever um (laughs) but yeah uh just final notes here uh the season was built up to be are the secrets of the last season going to get out with winston and diego seeking justice for monty the season just ends up being a bunch of random nonsense for 10 episodes with way too many characters and story arcs to count winston and diego end up letting go of their justice for monty which makes their arcs feel incomplete Winston lets go of it because he loved the idea of Monty, but never truly loved Monty's character. Diego let go because of the time, because of the e- timing of Justin's death. Uh, Clay is clearly the main focus with his personality disassociation, which is a true thing for people to suffer. And after three seasons of doing really horrible shit and hiding it from people, Clay met his breaking point with this season, which is where the therapy sessions come into play and things like that. So, overall, like season four, it's not as bad as season three, just because like it. It's being somewhat realistic <laughs> with these characters in a way that, like, all right, so, like, this is Clay, and, like, he's been through a lot of shit, so now he has, like, this disassociation of personalities disorder, and, like, he's seeing a therapist, but, you know, overall, like, it's still 13 reasons why there's too many fucking plot lines and shit like that, so, yeah, you know, watch season one, and then you're done. Like, that's all I can really say. <laughs> yeah, season one, season one was actually pretty good. Like, I know some people have problems with it. But I, I, I legit like season one. Like I know there's things they fumbled on and they kind of, you know, they kind of made things better. Mm-hmm. But I think I think season one was a good way to extend what the book was already. Since I already read the book like in middle school, so I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I like this. But the moment they they announce a season two, I'm like, there's nothing they could do with this. And I was right. It just goes for River, uh, Riverdale and like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> this is where we are now. So yeah. Yeah, there are definitely some moments where I was like, man, Riverdale like it really took influence from this or. Or this season really took influence from Riverdale. Because Riverdale, man, I stopped watching Riverdale after, like, season two, I think. Because, like, I heard some of the crazy shit they do in Riverdale. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? So, I don't even bother with that. Also, because CW shows are 
notorious for being like 20 plus episodes so in there an hour mm-hmm. each and i'm like i ain't got time for that uh i mean i do but i don't want to waste my time on that sort of thing um <laughs> yeah but yeah you know season four like nothing can be as bad as season three and i'm glad they were able to somewhat learn from their mistakes but still like because they have so many characters in the show they aren't able and because like people really like a lot of the e characters from like season one they can't just like drop them just to like have us focus on other characters because you know fucking 13 reasons why fandom is crazy enough as is so <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, it it's crazy I, I would expect it to be a really bad thing <laughs> <laughs> all right so after all that let's get into the last of us part two spoiler discussion so oh no i'm fucking skipping over a whole part of the show let's talk about the ps5 event my bad so the <laughs> ps5 event happened oh, yeah, yeah, it's been so long that's why it happened like uh two weeks ago now so yes. ps5 event happened uh, first thing, I'm going to go through the games, then we're going to talk about the console first, then the games. Uh, so, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Holiday 2020, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, no release date. Uh, IGN said that, that it was a sequel to the 2016 game, but I disagree. Uh, Sackboy, A Big Adventure, no date. Kena, Bridges of Spirits, no date. Console exclusive uh, will be on PC, though. I think it's going to be on PS4 and PS5. Uh, Horizon okay. Forbidden West, no date. And then the PS5 hardware. So the design was obviously shown to us, which, um, you know, obviously memes were there. Uh, there is a full digital edition, so there's no 4K Blu-ray disc drive. Um, so, yeah, and I'm assuming the digital edition is going to be cheaper than the regular edition with the disc drive. And I would be interested to see what the sales number between these two models are. And the backwards compatibility rumor seems really false now just because of the digital edition, in my opinion. But what do you think of the console, so? Uh, okay, so in terms of like the console itself, I, I think it looks kind of dumb, but that doesn't really matter. I just hate that it's white. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I you know all my PS, all the PlayStation consoles have always been black. You know, and I kind of just well, not the first one, but you know, PS two, PS three, PS four, all been black. So it feels weird just having it be white, I guess. And pl- I just don't like how it looks. You know? but again, it does it really matter? Not really. Mm-hmm. Like you put the disc in, or you boot it up, and then that's it. You don't really look at it. So it's not that big of a deal, but yeah, I think it looks kind of dumb. Um, in terms of the digital edition, I think that's a, it depends on how much cheaper it is from the regular edition. Mm-hmm. Um, usually I, I go full digital nowadays, but I always like to have the option, so I'm, I'm probably going to get the regular edition anyway. It just see, It's like the same thing with the Switch Lite. Like, I probably would never buy that just because I like the option to play docked or portably. Like, I don't want to play board, uh, portably all the time, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, um, but yeah, if it's a lot cheaper, if it's like a hundred dollars cheaper, then that'd be a good, you know, sort of like sale version of the console. Um, and yeah, the backwards compatibility, I hope it's true. Please be true. <laughs> I really want it to be backwards compatible, but yeah, I, I hope it is. That's all I can say. They haven't really gotten into detail about any of it. So it being there is kind of unlikely or they might add it in later. Like backwards compatibility is always such a weird thing now. So yeah, uh, but I guess in terms of games, mm-hmm. you know, I thought they showed a lot of good games. You know, I I, I, I went on and saying this, like, this is probably one of my favorite Sony events in a while. Yeah. Um, you know, Spider-Man Miles Morales uh, looks really cool. Uh, it's, it's like a Lost Legacy slash uh, First Light sort of thing, mm-hmm. you know, what's like a standalone expansion. And I think they're starting to confirm it's going to be a PS5 exclusive, which is nice. You know, it was a good way to show the power of the PS5 as one of the first things you could mm-hmm. see. Uh, obviously miles has a lot cool you know he has some cool powers like going invisible and he had like the venom hands or whatever he like shock people and stuff so that's really cool i'm gonna be really excited to see what they do with uh, miles in this Mm sort of game um and of course ratchet (laughs) you know if you're if you heard me like shout during the like announcement thing that travis posted uh you know you know that i'm very excited for this as i love ratchet and clank and yeah i don't agree with it being a sequel to the 2016 game just because literally the end of uh, what you call it into the nexus ends with you know i guess spoiler alert but whatever <laughs> clank gets the dimensionator uh and he's like okay i'm gonna like fix this but he doesn't tell ratchet and I, I i was telling my brother like right before this was announced or i always told him like the next ratchet game is going to be an interdimensional game like I, I i when i saw this i called it so hard like i knew it was going to be something to do with like a bunch of different dimensions and things like that so it being like this, it, 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 like, it has to confirm that it's a um, Into the Nexus sequel and not a 2016 reboot set of the sequel. I could be wrong. Maybe they do some weird stuff. 
But I my money is on the Into the Nexus sequel because it, it makes way more sense that way. Yeah. Uh, um, just... I guess you want to yeah, share your thoughts on that. So, um, Spider-Man, Ma- Spider-Man Miles Morales, obviously. I'm fucking hyped for because I really liked the Marvel Spider-Man game on the PlayStation 4. Um, and... A lot of people were fucking confused on Twitter when, like, some of the games were like, this is a standalone game, and, like, it's going to be, like, the Lost Legacy sort of thing. Like, people were on Twitter, like, they didn't know what the fuck a standalone game meant. <laughs> and I was like, are you guys okay? <laughs> like, what is going on here? Um, but, yeah, like, I'm very, very excited for this. The fact that it is really... It, it is scheduled for a holiday 2020 game, while all of these other games that I listed off earlier were no dates like that has me very excited and if it is a launch title i might buy it i don't know <laughs> but i mean i might dude they announced the two things spider-man and ratchet i'm like yo i'm buying this thing i want bro. i know ratchet's not even coming out like till later but yeah still. uh but ratchet and clank ripped apart um i think the ign person that wrote that article just doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about they just assume that oh it's a new ratchet and clank game it's probably a sequel to the the uh, last one that they made that was a movie tie-in game uh, at the end of the day but Rift Apart, it's probably going to be a sequel in, for Into the Nexus and, like, the main line of, like, Ratchet games, like, the main timeline sort of thing, quote-unquote. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I'm super excited for the for this game as well just because um, they really did talk about on how, like, this is going to take control of, like, the PS5 hardware, like, going into, like, multiple different worlds, like, instantaneously, no load times. And I think that that is very true. Like, if they were to make that on, like, the fucking PS2, like, that would not be possible. There would be long-ass load times and it would just not be a fun gameplay experience. But the fact that in Rift Apart, they are really embracing that sort of aspect of like hey you know we're gonna go into this place and now you jump through this portal you're gonna be in there like instantaneously and you know that new female ratchet character is gonna be weird to see at first obviously but i was like all right like this is gonna be interesting because she's a alternate version of ratchet probably from a different dimension yeah plus i love this say it's gonna be a full length ratchet and mm-hmm. game and if you don't know, like the last full length Ratchet and Clank game was A Crack in Time, which came out like 10 years ago or 11 years ago soon. So, yeah, it's been a while. Most of them, like Into the Nexus uh, 2016, you know, they've been like budget games where like they're not as long as the original. Like 2016 was a little longer, but it was still like, you know, it was a $40 game. Like, it wasn't like a full price game, mm-hmm. like full length Ratchet and Clank game. So, I'm so excited that it's going to be like a full length like Ratchet and Clank game. I am very excited for yeah. this. They also confirmed that so. the uh, female Ratchet is going to be playable. So, we're yeah. probably going to be so jumping be be- back and forth between the two just because on how Clank is somewhere off with that character. So, very excited for this one. Yeah. Um, so, I really like this presentation because they showed a lot of like colorful like platformers mm-hmm. and things like that there was a lot of different things you know what yeah. i mean um so it, it was just a cool way to show all the diversity and things like that like yeah now we got Sackboy big adventure so this is just 3d world but with Sackboy, <laughs> yep. um which i'm down for you know i really like the 3d world games or 3d land and stuff like that mm-hmm. the some of my favorite mario games uh because you know it's just pure platforming and i love that and seeing, I guess, like, a Sony's take on it with Sackboy, I think they do some cool stuff. And from, from what we've seen of the gameplay, it looks it looks pretty cool. Like, I, I'm pretty excited. You know, Sackboy has been kind of in limbo since uh, Media Molecule are making Dreams and, you know, not really making Little Big Planet anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know the people that made this game made Little Big Planet 3, and that wasn't the best one. But hopefully them doing their own thing could, like, make, you know, the game better. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So Yeah, Sackboy, a big adventure, you know. Another platformer. I'm down. I don't really care. <laughs> yeah, I'm always down. I'm always down for platformers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always okay with that. Uh, the next game too, uh, Kenya, Ken, Kenya, Kina, I, I, Bridge of Spirits. Yeah, Kenya, yeah. Kenya. Yeah, <laughs> it looks really good. So it looks like sort of like uh, what I gathered from this. It looks like sort of like Pikmin plus like Legend of Zelda sort of thing with some like Dark Souls like rolling and stuff like that. Mm. Um, it, it, the gameplay looks fun, but the graphics look absolutely amazing. Like it looks super good you know the game definitely makes you feel like you're playing like like a dreamworks pixar movie like it looks super good like it really caught my eye when i first saw this game because i'm like yo that looks sick so yeah that's gonna be a really fun looking game to at least look at yeah <laughs> if it's not good <laughs> at least it would be really pretty but yeah the gameplay does look pretty good as mm-hmm. well the uh the studio that made that like majora's mask like movie yeah. did this game so like that has some people interested and kind of excited for it i just want to see more of it just because it just looks so good and like this might be another one of those games that i buy on the ps5 just because if i do end up getting this console at launch i'm gonna need something to play right so uh depending on w- when or where this game sort of like launches and things like that 
Uh, it's, you know, very exciting. <laughs> uh, the next game, and, Horizon yeah. Forbidden West. Um, I know a lot of people were expecting a Horizon sequel. Personally, I wasn't. I was like, hey, you know, if they want to do it, they can. But it looks like that they are fully going through with it with Horizon Forbidden West, uh, which people are just calling Horizon Zero Dawn 2. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for it just because I really liked Horizon Zero Dawn in terms of like the gameplay. The story, if I'm going to be honest, like I remember the beginning and the twist and the end, and that's about it. I don't remember a lot of like the in-between stuff just because it's a, it's actually a really big like open world game and a lot of shit happens, so I don't remember yeah. a lot of it. Um, but Horizon Zero Dawn, I did have a lot of fun with the gameplay like you were describing earlier, but yeah, yeah. sequel, very good. <laughs> But yeah, um, in terms of that, you know, I think that was there were some other games in there too, um, like uh, what was that game called? Death Loop. That one looked mm-hmm. kind of cool. Like where you like, yeah, that that one really caught my eye as well. Uh, but yeah, yeah, most of the games they showed really did look pretty fun. Uh, a lot, again, like I said, a lot of good diversity in terms of the games they showed. You know, there was colorful platformers, some puzzle stuff, and like you know, a bunch of other cool stuff, shooters. So yeah, they really got the whole range of like video game genres to show what the PS5 could do and stuff like that. So, yeah, overall, I thought the event was fantastic. I I really had a good time with it, you know, a lot of good hype things, you know. I mean, if uh, they could just show Ratchet and Clank and everything else could just been garbage and still would say this, but I honestly mean that the event was, was a really good Sony event, and I think they did a good job selling me on the PS5. Mm-hmm. I think um, the last time I was really, like, sold on the... Uh the on a like playstation slash sony event was 2016 when like they had like that big e3 with god of war detroit become human spider-man and a bunch of other games i can't name on the top of my head right now but there were just so many games that they showed off during that one e3 that the following e3 is that they kind of just re-showed those games over and over again which it's kind of disappointing but um yeah like this event was definitely like really really good just because there was no like you know talking person like all right so for our next game here you know like sort of thing it was just like trailer after trailer after trailer after trailer which i think uh works for the gaming space a lot more compared to like normal like press events and things like that where you have to like describe things before you you show it to them with with the game you could just like all right just show it to us and like we'll just make our own sort of like thoughts on it and then afterwards if we're that interested in it we'll look up like articles and things like that like what insomniac did uh they went into further detail about spider-man miles morales being like yes this is a standalone game and then for rift apart you know with the things that they were able to do with that game so yeah i i just i'm I'm just excited (laughs) that's like like that's the biggest takeaway i watched the trailer like 40 times because i'm just so excited for like i don't blame you uh Last time I watched like a trailer like that religiously might have been the Spider-Man PS4 trailer. Uh, the last trailer period was probably like Infinity War slash Endgame stuff. So, but yeah, yeah, super duper excited about the PS5. Now, lastly, what I was trying to get to earlier, <laughs> The Last of Us Part Two <laughs> spoiler discussion. So I played the game. Uh, Damien, you have not, right? I have okay, not. No. But you've been, you know, you. Uh, I I know uh, yeah you know about <laughs> the leaks and you've been you know seeing what other people think and things like that. Um, yeah. So like, what's your like sort of like opinion on the game as a person who hasn't played it and isn't like too invested in like the Last of Us world and things like that? But f- pretty much from like a outsider perspective is what I want to know. Uh, I guess from an outsider's perspective, um, you know, the gameplay looks good. You know, like like I, I like I've seen my brother play it a bit. You know, it looks like the first one just with like some nice quality of life things. Maybe it could look better. Or whatever. Like I'm not. Too, I, again, I, I'm. I, first of all, I'm not really into that sort of gameplay anyway. Where it's very like stealthy and things like that. I guess not too into that. So you know, I'm sort of the wrong person to ask for mm-hmm. that. But it looks good. You know, the game looks fun to play and stuff like that. Um, I guess in terms of story, um, I, it does like full. Yeah, spoilers, yeah, yeah. Right? full like, spoilers. Like, okay. like no, no holding back. We're gonna talk about fucking everything. Okay. So again, I don't want to judge. Like I can't really judge it because you know I didn't watch the whole thing. I didn't play the whole thing. I, this is just me reading it. So I'm not gonna act like. I know anything, mm-hmm. <laughs> but basically, from Red Red, you know, people are really upset about Abby killing Joel. Uh, I felt like Joel like should have died in the first game. I guess like I don't know. I felt like he wasn't really long for this world anyway, so I don't know why people were so upset from him dying. Mm-hmm. Like I felt like he did his whole character arc in the first game with like uh, Ellie and stuff like that. You know, saving her from the fireflies or whatever, and then like him dying here. Like, I know people don't like it because you know 
Abby comes out of nowhere and just like murders him or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I feel like people complaining about that. It's kind of, it's kind of dumb. I don't know. And, and plus, the whole game advertises like, oh, Ellie's gonna get revenge. I'm like, who else is she gonna get revenge? For? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I don't. Know. Um, and in terms of you know the other part of the story, like I know you play as Ellie for a while. And then, like, I guess right before you're going to fight Abby, like, switches over to Abby, right? Yes, is that, what that happens? is exactly like, it's like, what oh. happens. <laughs> and that's where a lot of people don't like it is because, you know, it kind of just feels like you're doing, like, a 10-hour, like, side quest that people keep saying where you just play as Abby and go through it until you get up to the part where, you know, you're up to the final bit again. Um, and I-, I could see how that could, like, ruin pacing, I guess. Because I-, oh, I-, I basically from everyone I'm hearing, I hear the game is just too long. Like. Mm-hmm. I hear some people say maybe you could cut it down by a few hours. Like it just it doesn't really need to be as long as it is, and you know that's a complaint I've been hearing from like from both sides. Either if you like it or don't like it as much. Um, so yeah, I guess in terms of like that stuff, you know, I, I can understand that. And I guess with the ending bit, I also don't really agree with because it's like because you know. Ellie doesn't kill Abby at the end, even though you know she murdered like everyone. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just, I just feel like if you, if Ellie went through all that trouble to kill all these other people just to get to her, and then she's just like, no, I'm not gonna kill you. That feels a little dumb because I'm like, you already killed all those other people. Like you're already too far gone at that point. Like you know, you might as well just kill her. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I feel like Abby. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what Abby, how Abby feels about this. I don't know. If she's just gonna murder Ellie at some point anyway. Or not in this game, but like maybe in a future game because I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like maybe Abby won't have that same mindset, and maybe she'll just like I'm just gonna leave and kill you later. <laughs> like, I don't, it feels it's sort of the problem I have with Walking Dead with Rick, where he was always like, "No, I'm better than this. I'm not gonna kill like you know people." <laughs> and then like so many people, all of his friends died and things like that because he was an idiot. And like you should have just killed them because they didn't have that same mindset as you. And then Rick later on just goes on and like murders everyone because you know. No one shared that same belief he did. And I guess that's the impression, just from reading the story of Last of Us 2, it kind of just feels like an, a better written episode of Walking Dead, which I don't know if that's really <laughs> a good thing or not, but that's kind of what it feels like. Again, I'm not, I can't really criticize it fairly because yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't play it. I've only read the leaks, so I'm just seeing from what I'm reading where it feels like, it feels like a Walking Dead episode. <laughs> that's that's basically what I'm saying. Um uh, but yeah, I, again, I don't think it's fair for me to say, you know, I'm not going to go around like all these other people on Twitter, like denouncing this game, calling it the worst thing ever if they didn't play it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like I didn't play it. So I feel like I'm not that fair to criticize. I didn't even watch it. So that's why I feel like I'm not I'm not in a position to really judge the game. I'm just giving my opinion from what I hear, but take it with a grain of salt. Um, I guess, I guess the other good thing I could say is the game looks very, very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's basically where I stand. Basically, I think the game could get a little weird where it's like, you know, kill this dog, but you didn't really have the option not to kill it. Uh-huh. So it made, the game makes you feel bad afterward. I'm just like, well, that wasn't really a choice you had. The game kind of just forced you to do these things. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so I made a 35-minute video just talking about this one game. So I'm going to try to not be as long because <laughs> I already pretty much got okay. everything off my chest. But... um. Yeah, so talking about the ending, because, like, that's, like, the main thing that people are upset about is, like, oh, my gosh, she didn't kill her at the end. But, like, the way I talk about it in that video in particular is that, like, so she goes through everything, right? She goes through all of this trouble. And, like, I think at that moment when she's, like, when she's about to do it, when she's about to, like, drown Abby, she sees Joel and she's, like, oh, shit, like, wait, this isn't, this isn't what I'm supposed to do. And, like, a lot of what The Last of Us is, in my opinion, is people thinking they're doing what they think is right so like joel saved ellie quote unquote he's he like literally the game opens up with him telling tommy about what happened and then tommy's like damn bro so what you do and then <laughs> and then joel's like i saved her and i was like all right bro if that's how you want to view it as i don't think you saved her but i think that there are definitely many different ways to interpret that ending one of the ways that you saw it is very common where people are just like bro man you went through all of that trouble just fucking kill her at the end and like neil Druckmann, i think um i'm not sure if this is official or what but like there's a quote out there that like he said that like throughout most of the development of the game he ellie was going to kill abby but at some point during the the during the development they felt like it wasn't right for her character's arc in the end which like some people obviously disagree with um and i think that it makes sense for her character in the end because when she does go on this like revenge mission back again because when i was playing it i was like what the fuck are we doing here like you have this nice farm life 
you have your girlfriend, you have the kid that they that uh, she had with her ex boyfriend or whatever, um, Dina, uh, and um, you know like she has like a good life, relatively speaking for the fucking zombie apocalypse. Um, <laughs> yeah, and like she just throws it all away to go back into the Abby plotline again, and like when she comes back, Dina's gone, the baby's gone. And she's lost two fingers because fucking Abby bit them off because she wasn't trying to die. But um, in the end, like, she lost everything. Like, she lost everything because of this hatred, because of this anger that she had, because someone killed who she loved. And she doesn't know about Abby's dad dying by Joel's hand. And I think a lot of people miss this aspect of the story is that, like, people don't know everything. So, like, Joel didn't know why Abby killed her. Abby doesn't know why Joel killed her dad, and Ellie doesn't know why Abby killed Joel. So if people actually just sat down and like, you know, like sort of like talked about it for a bit, like they probably wouldn't wouldn't have killed each other. But just because of how like this world works, and because there is no like system in place to like stop these things from happening, um, they just do what they think is right. So like going back to that, Joel thought saving Ellie was the right thing, and then Abby thought killing Joel was the right thing for justice for her dad, and then Ellie thought going on this fucking mission to kill abby and all of her friends by the way like she literally kills so many people during this game i was just like oh my god like what the fuck but when we get to it she's like wait this isn't the right thing this isn't what i should be doing this isn't who i am because there were multiple parts in in the game where she's like slowly turning into joel which like i saw in a cosmonaut uh variety hours video cosmonaut Cosmonaut Marcus, he made like a pretty good video like critiquing the game and I recommend you guys watch that along with my video by the way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like he made a pretty good video like critiquing the game and like actually like criticizing it. And one of the points that he made during that, fuck, I just lost my train of thought, <laughs> was about like, you know, like this whole thing about the ending was like, it makes sense. It makes sense in the end because like, she just thought that this wasn't the right thing to do anymore and it completes her arc in the end and the thing with abby so obviously like the way they paced the story and the way they structured it was a little funky because i think that having us play as abby in the beginning without us knowing anything about her character until halfway through the game where we have to play as her was a bit strange because once i finished the game i was like oh okay i understand why they placed her gameplay segments in the beginning but i was just like it could have been Joel, and then, like, like imagine if the player played as Joel in those beginning segments, and then he dies to Abby's hands that they just saved this, like, random girl, right? Like, the, yeah. the amount of more backlash that probably would have happened would have been insane. And I think that that might have been the better, like, narrative move just to, like in terms of like gameplay and things like that and like people talking about like oh my god like every single time i killed a dog on stream while playing the game i was like guys i don't want to do this but this dog's gonna fucking kill me so i gotta kill it um and like this is a game where like it doesn't give the player much choice and like i think that is fine in the grand scheme of things of what naughty dog wanted to tell this story about hate because the game was about part one was 100 percent about love like they talk about this a lot they talked about part one being about love and like you know sacrificing fucking the entire human race to save one person you love that's pretty much what joel did and like he faces the consequences for those actions in this game where like eventually lee does find out about that about this truth and like um joel does die for the for the actions of killing the fucking doctors and the fireflies like shit happens in this game because of what happened in the first and like a lot of people that are critiquing this game and just fighting each other on Twitter, which is fucking hilarious. Like, people just, like, starting up random-ass arguments and, like, random shit on Twitter because, like, the story's bad. Wah. I stopped playing once we got to Abby, and I'm like, you didn't fucking fully play the game. You looked up the ending on YouTube, and that's it. Like, if you actually played through Abby's story, which isn't the best, mind you. I, I will agree. Abby's story isn't the best. But when you play through Abby's story you understand her character more, you understand why she did the things that she did, and you get to see her journey of becoming like, or not becoming, but you get to see her be like, not this shitty person that just killed Joel. Like, she's a, she's still a fucking human being, and like, she saves like these children, part of these scars, which is like, the enemy faction that she's a part of, or whatever, and like, she saves them because they left 
the scars because one of them shaved their heads, which is like obviously a fucking dumbass reason. But like she saves them because they're children and she still has a heart and she's still a human being. I don't sympathize with her necessarily, but I understand why she did the, the things that she did. And yeah, like people review bombing, people saying they're paid reviews and things like that. Like the fuck's wrong with you? Like review bombing is such like a dumb thing I find because you're literally taking your time to create an account or one that you already have going to a game or a movie saying it's a zero i didn't fucking like this hit enter post done and like people will blatantly use these like user scores and like critic scores to like argue their point but the scores are meaningless unless you read what the content has in store so like most of these people saying the game's a zero Joel died. They didn't do my boy Joel justice. Things like that, bro. Motherfucker, Joel was never a good character. This beloved, this <laughs> beloved character you guys love so much, man. This guy was an asshole in the game, in 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 fucking part one, right? And when I played part one, and when I finished it, and I realized that Joel killed everyone in the hospital to save Ellie, I didn't view him as a fucking hero. I was like, was I playing as the bad guy the whole time? And then, you know, like, my 14-year-old self at that time, like, looked up, you know, like, articles and things like that. What does the ending of The Last of Us mean? Things like that. And I was like, oh, okay, like, people aren't as black and white as they appear to be. People aren't as, you know, like, haha, I'm the good guy. Haha, I'm the bad guy sort of thing. And people still don't get that meaning in part two. Because part two, Ellie, obviously, like we said, kills a shit ton of people, right? But at the end yeah. of the day, people still view her as, like, the good guy, right? The good girl as like our main protagonist but like she just fucking tortured this girl and like she just fucking did this and that and like you see oh, oh okay now i now i remember my point uh going back to cosmonaut marcus's video you see that like uh he makes a point that like ellie slowly becomes joel in this game like you see her that like when she tortured Nora in the hospital, when she's like breathing in spores and fucking dying and trying to get info on Abby's location, she tortures her. And like, you see the after effects of that, that like, she's, she's not built for that. Like she is not used to doing shit like that. But obviously like in part one, like obviously when Ellie goes missing because of that fucking creepy character played by Nolan North, I forget his character's name, but um, when she goes missing and Joel grabs two of them and fucking tortures them, gets info out of the first one. And then the second one's like, hey, man, he told you everything. He's like, oh, I believe him. I know. And then he just beats the shit out of him, cuts the black, and then it goes back to Ellie. You guys thought that he was a good character then? Fuck no. My man Joel was beating him up for the thrill of it or just for the fun of it or whatever. So, like, people in, like, or, or should I say, Ellie in this game is slowly becoming Joel. And, like, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, that's for you to discuss. Personally, I think that, like, it's neither. It's not a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's not black and white, pretty much. Um, and, like, seeing her evolve into that was obviously, like, kind of interesting to see because she does have, like, after effects. Like, one moment in the game, she literally kills a pregnant woman. But, like, she didn't know that. So, like, after she killed her, she, like, opens up, like, her jacket and then she sees, like, the bulge. And then she's, like, she's fucking, like, freaking out and shit like that. And then, like, Tommy and, like, Jesse show up and they're like, hey, hey, hey. It's okay. Let's go back to the, the, the let's go back to the theater and then Abby shows up and all that other shit. But yeah, I think that like people are being like super just like <laughs> fucking unnecessarily like simplifying the story of the e Last of Us when it's so much more complicated, even starting with the first game and people are just like man joel died i fucking hate this shit like <laughs> when i was playing the game like live on stream when joel got shot in in the fucking leg with the shotgun i was like holy shit what the fuck i was like whoa like i like <laughs> if you want to see that it is a highlight on my twitch page twitch.tv slash tv sound gaming i specifically clipped that just so you could see that like i genuinely reacted to that because i didn't know what to expect from this game you know some people are like oh you know kind of knew joel was gonna die i didn't know what to expect because i was just kind of just like ah, oh, whatever you know sort of thing so when that happens i was like oh okay like and it it moves the story forward he doesn't just die because because no reason you you literally get to play like eight nine hours of like ellie from that point on and then it jumps to abby which like going back to the pacing issue um like I think that they should have introduced her story a lot sooner just because once we finally get to know her story, we're already at like the pinnacle point of Ellie's story where she finally confronts with Abby. And then it goes all the way back in time 
to part one where we see Abby and her dad chilling out and then her dad dies and then we go to Abby killing Joel and then we get to see her live her life after that within the Western Liberation Front and her sort of like journey and things like that. I think that introducing her backstory should have been placed earlier and I think her story should have been a lot shorter because this is a new character we're talking about here. I I, I just think like my brother brought this up too. They probably should have just done like a in between game with Abby, like that explained like you know like a lost legacy or whatever. Mm-hmm. They should have done that before this game. Like you know, don't even mention Joel or like mention him in passing because obviously it's important for Abby's like you know reason of doing her thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, j- just have that whole separate adventure, just playing as Abby, and then at the end you figure out like maybe it's Joel, and that that leads to the events of this game. So that helps people or Ravi like know Abby as a character. You know, people don't hate her or Ravi because she killed Joel, but people can really sympathize with oh, some dude just murdered like her her dad, you know, like, oh I wanna know what this is going. And it just feels like a separate game in that universe. But then that goes into Last of Us Two, where you do all these events, you figure out Abby kills Joel and then you just play as Ellie the whole time. And then maybe you feel bad for L uh, for Abby during that whole time, oh I don't want to kill her either. You know, I feel like that would have worked more and it would have cut down the length of this game as well, so it doesn't feel as bloated and things like that. I don't know. I felt like maybe making a separate game in between one and two would have been better, but you know, what do I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. I think that that could have been a avenue that Naughty Dog could have took, uh, but I guess they were just like, we're going to make the fucking longest game possible. The game was 20 hours long, by the way. Like, this is Naughty Dog's yeah. longest game, and because Naughty Dog games before have been not that long, I was trying to, trying to like start the game and finish it on stream, and then I was like, fuck i'm like eight nine hours in and i'm still not done and i don't feel like i'm close to the e end either so then i just like cut the stream went to eat dinner came back played the rest of the game off stream that night and the next day and like yeah i think that people are just being way too harsh on the game i think that this is not the perfect sequel that people wanted which is like another reason why people really are upset with this game but i think it's okay to like the game like people like there are people out there that genuinely like like the game like like one of my uh, YouTube buddies, like I was talking to him on like DMs. He's like, "Hey man, I saw that you finished the Last of Us." Because at the time when, when you know, like it was like peak, like not like Last of Us drama. I kind of just tweeted, "I finished the Last of Us Part Two, send tweet." Like that's all I did because I didn't want to uh, like start up any like controversy or, or shit like that or like argue with like random ass people because uh, I was going to explain that in my thirty five minute video, which hopefully you watch because I I talk about more stuff in there as well. So I, I'm. I'm I'm kind of going to try to stop myself here in a second, but like he genuinely liked the game and like he, he even brought up points that like, you know, he didn't like or things like that. And, you know, like he, he hopes that there is a part three and, and I was like, uh, you know, I'm not entirely sure if we should do that yet because, you know, part two is very polarizing and, you know, not a lot of people really want more Last of Us because of this game. Um, and I think people are being extremely harsh on Naughty Dog just because th- this is their like first like big blunder, I would say, as like a, yeah, as like I as like too. a studio because like everything else that they've released beforehand has been relatively pretty good, and um, now this is like their first like big game that's like caused a lot of people to be like, yo, what the fuck is this shit? And like I think it's just people being people and just being dumb and stupid and like not fully like realizing or like taking like their emotions and feelings and putting them to the, the side and sort of just being like I like how can I fairly criticize this game instead of being like Joel died I hate Abby the ending sucked 0 out of 10 sort of thing you know so yeah I think that other things on the game that I didn't discuss upon because I literally only talked about the story gameplay is improved really really e- e- good gameplay I really e- like that this game has a much more emphasis on stealth because doing the stealth sections feels a lot more rewarding and satisfying to pull off uh, visually, uh, like you said earlier, Damien, the game looks great. Uh, it, oh, it looks beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> probably the best looking PS4 game I've mm-hmm. seen. The best looking PS4 game by far. Uh, and also the soundtrack, once again, uh, you know, hits all of the right notes and things like that. Um, but yeah, like overall, like the game is a flawed sequel. It's not a super good game. It's not a super bad game either. I'd say it's in the middle. Um, it's not uh, one of my favorite games from this year. Like if I were to Put, I mean, I didn't play that many E games this year, but it, it it's definitely not my game of the year so far. I feel like that there are other games that are probably going to come out later this year, like Ghost of Tsushima. Still very excited for that game. Ooh, yeah, I'm excited for that. Well. Um, but yeah, like there are just other games out there that I feel like that came out this year that are probably better than this one. But yeah, you know, I feel like you know after all this, I don't think we needed a Last of Us two, but people really wanted one just because they love Joel and Ellie so much, but they didn't realize what the uh, 
not the people at Naughty Dog wanted in a Last of Us sequel instead of just telling more of Joel and Ellie and things like that. They wanted to actually tell a narrative and tell a story about hate and I think that they did a pretty good job on that, honestly. Um, but, you know, wherever your point stands, because it's very interesting talking about this game with other people because everyone has a f- differing opinion on it, especially to those that mm-hmm. fully played the game. To people that played Ellie's stuff and then skipped Abby's, fuck you, I'm not talking to you about the game because you honestly cannot fairly criticize this game. And I think I'm being a little harsh by saying fuck you, but, like, honestly, like, people just, like, keyboard warrior on Twitter, like, oh, the story sucked, like, you don't know what you're talking about, this and that, like, this game is a disgrace, it's the worst sequel of all time, I'm just, like, if you look at, like, the bigger picture and, like, the bigger themes talked about within this game and not just, like, a surface level sort of thing, I think The Last of Us has always been about, like, looking at, like, things more broadly, because not everything's black and white, not everything is, like, as cut and dry as it seems, pretty much, is what I'm trying to say here, Right, (laughs) but... That's all I have to say. Is there anything else you would like to add? Uh, no, I think I think you covered everything. <laughs> I think I said my piece on the game as well. Okay, so that's pretty much my thoughts on Last of Us Part Two. Our thoughts, I should say. Uh, if you want more in-depth thoughts on my own personal experience with the game, I uploaded a 35-minute video that I worked really hard on, so I would re- really appreciate it if you watched <laughs> it. Um, but yeah, is there anything else you'd like to add to the show, good sir? Um, no, I think I think that's everything. All right, so thank you guys for listening to the Travis and Damien podcast, episode thirty nine. We will see you guys two weeks from now with another episode. Later.